I'd like to point out that fascism isn't about getting laid. It was funny, there was a woman, I assume she's a woman anyway, you never know on social media, on YouTube that stated she thought the reason I make these videos is because to impress the girl <laughs> that doesn't want me. Now some of that could be true in a sense, except for the fact my beliefs in fascism, but you can call it whatever you'd like, radical traditionalism, hyper-conservatism, paleo-conservatism, or whatever, have been with me uh, since I've been a young child, actually, since I've been about 11 years old, and I first read Mein Kampf at about 10. Uh, I knew what I believed. Now, what's funny is if I was about getting laid, <laughs> I would be looking into, I would have been hanging out with the people that be listening to the Rage Against the Machine and talking about how Whitey got them down. But no, that's, uh, that's not what I did. In fact, I took a big hit to my social life because of my views, my strong beliefs. Uh, regarding the, quote, chick that I like. Now, this is a very truthful statement. Uh, a very uh, beautiful and intelligent person that actually was a fascist. I do like them quite a bit. And what, it, what had happened was, through social media, I was very depressed by the 2016 election and the resultant betrayal of Donald Trump to his base, meaning me. <laughs> and there was a very, uh, very attractive, very intelligent person that actually believed what I believed, despite the fact that her um, Latino heritage or Latin American heritage was extremely different than my uh, white trash wasp heritage. But the point is, true fascism, true traditionalism transcends race, transcends ethnicity. Now, most importantly, this individual, who will remain nameless because I assume that she follows my channel, uh, and I would not want to offend her, uh, actually agreed with me on points that other American white trash fascists, which is what has happened to the, the fascist world in the United States, or neo-Nazi world, uh, agreed with me on points of race, perhaps not all the way, but agreed with me to the point where she saw the importance of hybridization, the, the need to transcend uh, the past and move into the future while respecting uh, the traditions of the past. Now, this is important because, and, and it's true, this is what reawoke in me this, this fervor to say what is on my mind and do what I want for once in my damn life. Uh, for the past 10 years, I had felt trapped. I was a fascist trapped in a world of anarchists. And I still am, which is why I will be <laughs> leaving this, uh, this country in a short while. Uh, and I will have to curtail my political views very much so uh, to sustain myself where I'm going. But the thing is to find one person that actually understands fascism the way fascism was meant to be understood and in a modern context awoke in me it actually made me feel like blood pumped through my veins again because I have gone for 10 years uh, not just in real life which would be understandable being surrounded by a bunch of morons as I am in real life but also on social media where you would expect somebody somewhere in the whole damned world to actually understand what fascism is nobody really did and those that did perhaps were limited in language skills and could not speak English but this one person did get me and that's what did awaken me but that is not why I am a fascist I was a fascist far longer than that and you have to understand this is why communists think that fascists are the way they are communists do join a communist revolution to impress chicks and then they find out they got in over their head <laughs> the same with my veganism okay i'm an ethical vegan for the animals i didn't become a vegan to impress a girl or get laid okay if i did that that would be quite uh quite interesting because there's not much i've ever done to impress women and again my social life has suffered greatly due to my veganism. So remember, fascism is an innate belief 
In my opinion, fascists are born. You cannot create a fascist. A fascist is who they are from the point of birth. It is the environment that may release these traits in them, but that is who they are. And again, whether you call it a fascist, a radical traditionalist, etc., it's not a political view in my opinion. It transcends politics, it is a lifestyle, it is a spiritual path that one is born with. Uh, in fact, I think that a fascist ethnicity needs to be created, uh, starting with the Pan-American race. This video will be about how I came to my political beliefs through my life experiences. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was a pretty rough customer. I was raised by uh, my dad and my mom, but my dad was a Levian Satanist. So I was raised under the motto, if somebody pushes you, you make sure the next time they push anybody, they think twice, so that might is right philosophy. Anybody that hasn't read might is right should read might is right. Now, this caused me to get thrown out of school, uh, public school. I went to alternative schools for delinquents at, uh, in grade three, I guess I was about uh, eight or nine years old. Now, the schools I went to were majority minority, mostly black, uh, some Hispanics, but mostly black. And most of the time I was the only white dude. <laughs> so I had to learn how to um, up the game, if you know what I mean, because I was being attacked on a regular basis by blacks, sometimes Hispanics, but mostly blacks. And uh, the brutality of the attacks is a lot more in these schools because the kids all have, uh, you know, criminal records, uh, usually of violence. Now, moving on, this showed me at an early age that anybody that can deny a difference between the races, uh, wherever that difference came from, I didn't know at the time, whether it was biological or, um, you know, environmental, though I would have assumed that I did think it was biological. Clearly, I don't look like them, they don't look like me, there's something going on, on a biological level, whether you understand biology or not. Now, moving on to uh, my teenage years, I was still in these schools, still uh, fighting pretty much every day, and uh, missing a lot of school, didn't want to go to school. Uh, eventually, I got involved in uh, National Socialism. I discovered uh, Mein Kampf was given to me, actually, at the age of 10 by, of all people, my child psychologist, a wonderful lady from Germany. Uh, she gave me the British translation of Mein Kampf, which was a bit different than the American translations with Abby Foxman talking about how horrible Hitler was. So it was a true translation, a good Nazi translation, and it showed me the truth about National Socialism and what National Socialism really was. And Adolf Hitler wasn't really a crazy nutcase. He was actually a modest, uh, very moderate guy, even moderate by uh, US standards of uh, policy. Moving on to my teenage years, again, like I said, I was, uh, I was still fighting pretty much every day. Black people, you get, you get it through your head that they do not dislike you because of your ideas. I mean, you can try and befriend them, you can try and be nice to them, whatever. These particularly, particular folks did not want anything to do with you because of the way you looked. Moving on to adulthood, after uh, going to college, I have a uh, I have most of a degree in criminal justice. Uh, I also went to school for park management. Dealing with the blacks in these schools and understanding that they brag about the programs that are handed to them. I had to pay $35,000 in student loans, whereas these people are bragging about how they're being paid to go to school by the federal government. Uh, apparently, because I was poor and white, I didn't get these special programs. Um, which is, again, not the fault of the black people. It's the inane, the innate arrogance and the braggartness of these people. Now, moving on to, I guess I'll skip ahead all the way to the Trump nonsense, the 2016 election. This is what got me to understand who my friends really are. From the age of 14 to about age, uh, I'd say, 28 is when I quit actively trying to get white people to understand, look, there's something afoot. It might not be a real conspiracy, but these other people, particularly the black people, they don't like you. <laughs> and they, they are doing anything they can to attack you any way they can, anywhere they can. Okay, I, I kept saying this, trying to get it out to the white people. They didn't want to hear it. Never did, never will. 
But more importantly, um, for example, there was a, I brought her up in the past, a little girl from Mexico. Damn good national socialist. Damn good. She's reaching out to me, okay? And the one girl that really did change my views entirely, and again, I brought her up in the past, was a beautiful young lady from Argentina. Again, she's telling me what's what. She's reaching out to me. She knows what the truth is. I'm not reaching out to these folks. This is when I started looking into Latin American national socialists and seeing that they seem to have a, a deeper understanding than the U.S. national socialist. Now, what's also interesting is in the U.S., uh, national socialism, fascism, whatever you want to call it, it's a freaking sausage fest. It's only dudes, and at that, it's only dudes that seem to have an issue with the size of their cock. They seem to be very um, overtly aggressive. They, they seem to have little man syndrome up here in the U.S. When I'm looking at the, the Latin American National Socialists, I'm seeing a lot of women. And not only that, the women in the U.S. tend to be uh, fat hogs that are into National Socialism. They're big fat hogs. These chicks in Latin America, they seem to have uh, fat where the fat's supposed to be and not where it's not supposed to be. So what happened is I started thinking, you know, why the hell am I wasting my time with this U.S. sausage fest? As a vegan, I don't even care for sausage. I'm, I've always been more of a taco man personally. And as ridiculous as this video might sound, it's not a joke. The problem with the United States uh, and the, uh, the National Socialist Movement up here, or the Fascist Movement, is that we do not seem to have legit people. We have a bunch of angry, ferocious, wannabe Nazis that don't get it. Now, I'm not saying that you should be anti-black. I personally, or anti-anybody for that matter. Uh, I am not a white supremacist, if I said, as I've said in uh, other videos. I particularly like uh, Mestiza and Castiza girls, which are an uh, admixture of Native American and uh, Mediterranean blood. Now, the thing is, you don't need to be a weak, pathetic little bitch in order to basically, um, you can even want to mate with somebody that is not white and not seek the approval of every non-white. Another good example of this is the Milo Yiannopoulos craze the homosexual Jew, or Ben Shapiro, another, another uh, Jewish gentleman that has infected the conservative movement. Now, these people by themselves are, are not necessarily even uh, meaning badly, but who is acting very poorly are the white men that seek the approval of non-whites feverishly as some as like they need to satisfy some innate flaw in them where they're like well i can't be a racist because i like that jewish guy or i like that negro or i like this person or that person the fact of the matter is you need to understand that until you can be happy with being white you any approval you get from all these other things it makes your movement nothing now the reason i'm making this video is I get a little ticked at some people, and it's unfortunate, and I took a little break from social media to avoid saying things on, a, on Facebook I might regret. But the fact of the matter is, it is completely crazy. See, I don't even consider myself a white nationalist. I'm not even a racist. Now, the funny thing is, people I know that would portray themselves as white nationalists, or as believing in a white ethno state, who are racist, <laughs> seek the approval of non-whites more than I do. I don't seek the approval of anybody but myself and chicks that are cute, okay? And that's the bottom line. I don't need the approval of anyone. And there is some type of flaw in the average white person's mind where they need the approval of somebody that is not white, is a queer, or something else. So tonight, my favorite person on Facebook shut down her profile and I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. But, what I will dedicate to her, because I was planning on doing it anyway, was a post on a page that she manages on um, the women of positive reality, which shows the benefits of fascism over feminism. 
And some of these things include, well actually all of these things include fitness of mind and body, um, traditional family values, loyalty to the folk or the Volk, natural organic beauty, healthy sexuality, and femininity. And the thing is, the further we get away from these things, if you notice, these are all opposed by feminism. Uh, of course, the uh, fitness of mind and body is opposed through fat acceptance. Uh, traditional family values are opposed through lesbianism and the destruction of the family. Uh, loyalty to the folk, <laughs> that doesn't exist. Um, natural organic beauty is replaced with uh, all kinds of disgusting bullcrap. Healthy sexuality, of course, is replaced with degeneracy and femininity is replaced by uh, androgyny in the feminist. So, um, I, dedicated the, I dedicate this video to you and you know who you are simply because you have been such a huge inspiration to me. You have allowed me to finally cut all ties with my past forms of um, delusion is what it was, absolute delusion. You showed me the true beauty and power and showed me somebody that actually understood fascism and uh, you do really mean a lot to me and I hope you do follow my channel and I'm not gonna name you even though your name is like the female Latin American version of my name and everybody has it just know I wish you a happy new year and I look forward to seeing you again next year and uh, all I can say is thank you for enlightening me to the power and the beauty and the truth of real fascism and real femininity. I greatly admire you and you know who you are. Uh, I became homeless at, uh, I guess the middle of 2008 till around the middle to end of 2011. The stay in the homeless shelter showed me uh, the, the need for socialism. Prior to this, I was more of a, uh, a conservocrat, if you will, a Republican. I believe that um, social, social programs should be limited uh, and very limited at that and privatized wherever possible. But in the homeless shelter, I saw the need if white people were going to survive or if really anybody besides black people were going to survive. We need the same socialist programs that are given to the blacks to raise up the blacks. Uh, currently though, most currently, what shaped my political views was the, um, the Trump election. Now keep in mind, I've never fallen for Trump. I saw Trump more as a symbol to unify uh, people into civic nationalism. When he betrayed, in my opinion, betrayed his voting base with the attack on Syria, I lost all faith in him. However, um, it, it was actually funny because what that uniquely coincided with was me meeting a, um, a young lady on Facebook uh, named Eliana, who has commented on some of my videos, and actually not, not her political points of view, although her political points of view is a justicialist or Peronist, are very interesting. I do not subscribe to Peronism or Justicialism. Frankly, I don't know enough about Justicialism or Peronism to say I am a Justicialist or a Peronist. However, it was her unique character and unique uh, interests that coincided with my own that sort of complemented my own in a way that got me to finally fully divorce myself from the white supremacy nonsense and to uh, embrace Pan-Americanism. Now, I don't believe that Eliana is a Pan-American, but I do, I do want to credit her with helping me come to that conclusion. As for my view on the Native American and white mixing, I have always had that view. Um, since I was, as far as I can remember, I've always had the attitude that it was ridiculous, especially in North America, for the white settlers not to forci forcibly integrate the Native Americans into a larger group of people and to create a new race of people completely distinct from the Europeans. Now, of course, that's not how I expressed it when I was younger, but 
I still hold that belief, except not through force, of course, because that's uh, that's that time has passed. But through negotiations, through the share, the sharing of cultural values. And again, uh, one of Eliana's posts the other day on Facebook showed about how um, Ibero Americana or Ibero Americana is um, how the Spaniards see the former Spanish American Empire as one cultural identity. Well, what I see is I see Americanism as one cultural identity. It's kind of funny. Uh, I said in my last video that I don't know enough about Peronism to call myself a Peronist. Now I can't call myself a Peronist because I'm not an Argentine. Uh, what's funny is, uh, I never really looked into Peronism. I just knew that a girl that was a Peronist seemed to get me on every level <laughs> that there was to get me on. And I don't think this is necessarily because she's a Peronist. I believe this is because people of similar ideological viewpoints or similar character traits, I should say, are drawn to similar ideological viewpoints. Which be nothing better for a Peronist than another Peronist. Now, what's funny is this speaks to the Volk. Now, the Volk, <laughs> or Folk, would be the people. Uh, it is interesting. Argentina, from what I gather from Argentines, and especially um, my friend um, Eliana, who is very, um, well, she's an Argentine, of course, is the idea of race and nation are not... Are, combined in a way, but they recognize the, the idea of various mixtures, and it seems to not be as, um, kind of like America, how people are Irish, Italian, Polish, well, the United States, I should say, before I offend people from Latin America, but people can be Irish, Italian, and Polish, and be a United States citizen and be white. In Argentina, it seems to be taken even to a, uh, a higher degree, where somebody can be Native American. Spanish, Italian, and French, and still be considered an Argentine. But this concept of Volk as not being 100% um, uh, ethnically oriented, but based more on uh, basically the ideology, is a uniquely American idea. And by American, I mean that this is an idea that fits an American people of a multi-ethnic origin. Uh, recently, I only identify as a third positionist, though I do use the term fascist a lot. But I was enlightened to an ideology uh, called Peronism. The only reason I was not enlightened to Peronism earlier than this was my mind was clouded with nationalism. It wasn't until the Trump um, election cycle the 2016 election cycle that I um, began to soften my attitude toward Latin America. Uh, and I've, I've dated uh, Hispanic girls in the past and stuff like that. It wasn't that I had a racial issue with uh, Latin Americans, at least not the ladies. <laughs> One of my issues that I had that had softened my view toward Latin Americans was a, um, a little girl, uh, not little girl, she was like 15, her name was Fatima, and she was being bullied by white supremacists, that she herself was a national socialist and called herself a national socialist and agreed with national socialism. And she was the one that initially opened my eyes to Hispanic national socialism, or in this case, uh, fascism under the gold shirts. Um, later, actually, almost immediately later, I, um, I met a very beautiful girl in a National Socialist group. Uh, and I've mentioned her, obviously, in past videos. And what was funny is this uh, black dude, I think, said, What the hell is this? Uh, a beautiful indigenous girl with National Socialist views or uh, Nazi views or something. I forget exactly. But what was funny is I was so taken by the girl's appearance that I actually stated, I, I think my exact words were, oh my God, you are perfect, meaning she looked perfect. Then upon learning more about this, this girl's insights and things of that nature, I understood she, ha she was ultimately the most amazing third positionist I've ever met. Um, and I would have never taken this view if I kept my firm point on 
nationalism, on racialism, on these things. I would have never looked more into this. See, and this this girl, the girl that I met in the National Socialist Group on Facebook, is the one that enlightened me to Peronism. And without me softening my outlook to Latin American nationalism, or I should say third positionism, uh, and lessening my own views on U.S. nationalism, I would not have been able to advance my own outlook to a greater, uh, more productive view. So apparently the video I made my friend to assure them that I was okay, because I didn't want them thinking I was not okay, because they expressed, the only concern they expressed was concern for my well-being, and unfortunately thinking that I was not doing well for, because of them, which was completely untrue. I was not doing well long before I ever met them, and unfortunately I met them. But what you have to understand is the first mistake I ever made regarding that person was believing anybody else's opinion besides hers on who I am or what she thought of me. Okay, that's the first mistake. I'm not doing that ever again. Number two, she has my physical address, my phone number, my likeness, everything about me. If she wanted to, I'm toast. She has nothing to be afraid of. Number three, I'm in a completely different country never intend on being within the same country as her, out of respect for her. Believe it or not, I actually do respect her, despite the disrespectful of that uh, nature of that video. I needed to make sure that she knew that I was okay. Uh, unfortunately, got the wrong attention. I'm glad that she probably saw it, and she didn't comment, because she probably is a little bit annoyed and may be scared of me, I don't know why she would be, but the fact of the matter is, I'm leaving where I was tomorrow, I will be out and about, I intend on only being on my own for the rest of my life, why? Because I don't really need anybody's crap anymore, but the fact of the matter is, it's interesting how people hide behind the internet with the intention of only bothering other people. Now, it is true I made this YouTube channel for that one person to get her attention because I didn't want to lose her out of my life. I ended up losing her out of my life, not because of this channel. No, she enjoyed the videos I made. She enjoyed a lot of things that I did for her. It's unfortunate that I was stupid enough to listen to somebody else's opinion of what she thought of me because she probably thought a lot higher of me than I thought she did. But that doesn't matter at this point. The point is this. Um, the fake nature of the people on the internet is a very big problem. Uh, now, it's interesting. People get very brave hiding behind the internet. I'm not hiding behind the internet. People know who I am. People know where I live. People know everything about me. I've never pretended to be anybody that I'm not. Ironically, that person never pretended to be anybody she wasn't either. And it's interesting because when you act in a truthful manner and are honest about things, people like to tear you down. And that's a real shame. But the fact of the matter is, that person got me to give up white nationalism, got me to re-explore Christianity as a legitimate system of self-attainment and self-improvement, that person did a lot for me, and she knows that, and unfortunately, yeah, I annoyed the hell out of her, and I destroyed any, any chances of a genuine friendship with her. And the reason why, why? Because I believed what somebody else said about her, or what, or somebody else said she thought of me. And you know what? The, uh, I will continue to make videos, why? I own entertainment. The only reason I made these videos to begin with was my entertainment and the fact that she seemed to like them. And her entertainment was important to me. So as for all of the trolls on Facebook, blow it out your ass. And I do not intend on going to any country that is full of more people like the people that I'm trying to get away from in this country. 
I wanted to do a brief video with my insights on um, why psychology majors don't seem to understand human personality worth a damn. Um, this video isn't meant to upset the person that seems to have an issue with every frigging video I do uh, in relation to a certain person, but what I would say is this, okay? As I stated a number of times, and I wasn't lying, this video was created with the intention of getting the attention of a person that is very important to me. Now, what should be understood is whether or not I'm important to that person really doesn't matter at all. <laughs> and what's interesting is this, okay? The important, the, this person was important to me before I intended on ever meeting her. Her importance to me grew as I learned more about her. And being that I'm not planning on meeting her, this in no way affects how important she is to me. The problem I think that psychology majors seem to have is that they don't seem to understand that people are individuals. Now, I'm not trying to be a prick, but the funny thing is, yeah, the way I come across is abrupt, brutish, semi-racist. That's my personality. I don't change that, and I never change that for that, um, that person, the person that I made this channel for. She never minded my brutish personality. That's what needs to be understood. This channel was not created for anybody but her. The reason I continue to make videos is for my own entertainment, and I do have a sneaking suspicion that she does continue to watch my videos because she really did enjoy them. Uh, it's somewhat annoying that psychology majors think they understand human personality when they so clearly do not. Um, yes, I care very much for that person, and that doesn't matter whether she cares about me or not, although I do know she probably does, but that's about it. Uh, people on, uh, on social media had accused me of being led astray by my dick. Now, that's not true, not one bit, okay? Uh, it is very true that the final nail in the coffin was when I met somebody that wasn't necessarily white, that was superior to any white person that I had ever met. And I still hold her in very high esteem. Although, I, as an inferior person, not because I'm white, but because I'm stupid, uh, believed what somebody else uh, said about that person, and I uh, kind of screwed myself over on that one. I've never really sought attention. Um, in fact, uh, except from key individuals, individuals that were important to me, I have sought attention from. As I noted, this channel was created literally for one person. And that was the whole reason this channel was created. Not because I want fame and notoriety or anything like that, but because that person was important to me. And actually, that is the person that brought me back to third positionism. Ironically, that is also the same person that let me see the truth about third positionism. Not that I wasn't already there. I gave up on third positionism long before I met them. It was the Trump, the Trump run for office that brought me back in because I thought that there might be some viability towards civic nationalism, more fascistic, less national socialist. Uh, but it, it really isn't there favorite math teacher in the Americas, or possibly in the entire world. I'm going with the entire world. I don't really like math, actually, so probably are my favorite math teacher in the entire world. Um, I will be making you a happy Easter video, and uh, one of the beauties of me not being a Christian is you don't have to return Christian pleasantries. I don't intend on you ever speaking to me again, but I do know that you follow this channel and I do appreciate it. I appreciate that you liked the videos that I made especially for you. Um, what I want you to know though is, upon thinking about it, the only person that should feel bad is, is me. I, I put you through a lot of excessive stress that I didn't need to, and I'm very sorry for doing that. Um, I, you, did so much for me, which is kind of interesting because I set out to make you feel amazing and feel 
good about who you were, and I think in some small part I did succeed in that. Um, and you are amazing, you really are, and I've, I've always told you that and I've always meant that. And I know that my knowledge of you is very limited, um, you probably have a deeper knowledge of me than I do of you, simply because you were smart and asked me a lot more questions about me than I did of you. Um, all I cared about was how intelligent you were and how beautiful you were. And amazingly, um, you need to know the fact that you actually stated that you did genuinely care about my views on politics, on um, society, on things like that. That really did mean a lot to me, especially knowing that your grasp of these things was so great and knowing that you are much smarter than I am. It made me feel um, very good that somebody actually did acknowledge um, the importance of what I thought. Um, another thing is, the stress that I put you through was not purposeful. I want you to know that I never intended to upset you in any way. Um, and I regret upsetting you. But I know that if I feel bad about that, that'll probably make you feel bad because I feel bad. Which is why I won't feel bad. I just wanted to let you know, I still care about you a lot. And, uh, I know that you probably care about me, and that's probably why you're not talking to me, is because, well, A, I betrayed you, and B, you don't want to make me feel bad. But just know, you're always going to be in my thoughts, and just know that I will be saying Happy Easter to you. And because of your multitude of talents, let's see, I have math teacher, that's what I just used, computer engineer. Menson, I can keep going. <laughs> Your multitude of talents is um, very, uh, very convenient because I can get your attention without ever actually naming you. And um, just have a prosperous and wonderful life and be prepared for a happy Easter coming up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be switching gears toward a more longevity oriented outlook on this um, channel. And I'm also gonna, I'm gonna keep the anti-psychiatry stuff because that's very important to me. Um, basically, how it works is this. After working in mental health, I see how important it is to speak out against psychiatry and against drugging of people. Um, the reason why is because the person I made this channel for, who will remain important to me forever, uh, and I don't want that to weigh on you if you're watching this. You're very important to me because of who you are. And it's it's good <laughs> that you mean a lot to me. It's not bad. Uh, one of the last things that she told me was that she didn't want to see me falling apart and wasting my life. Um, and the fact of the matter is, the political nonsense, that was a huge waste of time. Uh, un unfortunately, <laughs> uh, it took me a little while to see that and she helped me see that um, thankfully but I'm also going to be hopefully moving to the Florida border of Georgia by May um, a friend of mine from Mensa lives there and he will put me up apparently uh, the good news is this although I may have reached a point in my life where it's unsalvageable uh, I don't have to be miserable anymore. And I'm, that this horrible, horrible situation with going to Georgia, because Georgia is full of rednecks, will be a brief stint before I move forward to wherever the heck I go from there. Uh, the person I currently live with, uh, I needed a plan. Uh, the person I currently live with, I did have to promise that I would do some things for them. I am a very loyal friend, and uh, I am still a very loyal friend of hers, um, simply because I'm a loyal person. And uh, I have to do some things, and then I'm going to get on my merry way. And uh, hopefully by May, it will be a new chapter in my life. And that's about it. And this channel will be geared mostly towards life extension. Okay, what you need to understand is this has allowed the little twerp that has the inability to socialize in any reasonable manner with real people and has allowed them to have a voice and to hide completely anonymously and profess the most insane ideas. And this is what you have with the alt-right. You have the people that have no friends, 
they have no life, and they have no, um, how can I put this? They have no ability to get laid. They are the person that has never had a girlfriend, never will have a girlfriend, and instead of seeking out um, a woman or somebody uh, to, I don't know, do things with that they want to do, they tend to take out their sexual frustration on people like me because I get the attention of people that are worthwhile individuals. Now, the individual that this little, this little pissant threatened happens to have an extremely high IQ and happens to be an extremely excellent person. Uh, morally as well as intellectually and physically beautiful. Now, what's why is this uh, ridiculous? Well, the reason this is ridiculous is this is the same type of mentality. These people would have been laughed out of the white nationalist community back when it was a thing. It is no longer a thing because going online, although it has allowed the word to spread, it has allowed the word to spread to people that cannot handle the truth and instead take the truth and put it towards this nonsense of revival of the ancient Tulian society and all this occult nonsense. And I'm not dissing the occult. I studied the occult. I think the occult is good at expanding one's viewpoints. However, these people live in the world of Dungeons and Dragons and live in the world of pretend and live in the world of Call of Duty and live in the world of all these nonsensical video games and all this other horse crap. And these people are the reason that the alt-right imploded because it is an imaginary thing. People like to think it's a movement. They're inferior. And what they do is they try to intimidate people like me Although what they don't understand is I'm not as easily intimidated as they are, which is why they hide behind the internet. They hide behind false names. They hide behind little tiny runic thimbles. But the fact of the matter is, Russian robot, look, you're not Slavic, you're not German, most likely, and you're certainly not a Nazi. You're an alt-writer that supports Donald Trump. Now, let's go to what, um... Uh, why I came to this view, or why I'm making this video. There is a very special person that I want to be very clear to. I will never lie to you. I will never pretend to believe in anything I don't believe in. But I want you to know that you really did quite a bit to help me see things a bit more clearly as far as the um, what is good for Western civilization isn't necessarily what I think. Okay, and the reason I'm saying this is um, I get foolhardy sometimes and I will say things um, that might be a little out of whack. Okay, but the one thing is this people like to accuse me of changing my beliefs for this or that reason. They refuse to believe in personal growth. Some of my views have gravitated recently more toward the uh, regular pantheism or religious pantheism, not because I'm becoming some sort of uh, religious kook, but because that is where uh, my intellect is taking me. That is where my reason is taking me. And the thing is, um, reasoning is very important. And this is the thing. If my reasoning is showing me that the teachings of Ellen G. White are true, and that specific teachings in the Bible are true. And we already know that specific teachings in other religions are true. They're observably true based on the outcomes which come from them. You can say that God does not exist, though I believe God does exist as nature, as I have believed my whole life. Uh, so when people say I am an atheist, that is an incorrect statement. When people say that, um, so what I'm trying to get at is here. If reason is guiding where I go, and that results in personal growth or change of personal attitudes. These changes are not occurring because I'm attempting to mislead anybody or alter anyone else's beliefs. Personally, I really don't care what anybody else believes. Although, um, I, uh, I did make this video with one very important purpose in mind. I wanted to let a very special person know that I am on her side regardless of what she believes and that's about it I make this video for a very special nerd and I call you a nerd because you're a nerd 
not as an offensive thing, but you're a nerd. You're a math geek, a science geek, a drama geek. <laughs> you like things that are very nerdy, okay? Comic books, okay? You also uh, uh, like to partake of things that would not be um, acceptable by those that you seek to associate with. And there's nothing wrong with this, except for the fact, and how do I know these things? Because unlike everybody else that only took an interest in your beauty, or only took an interest in what you projected, I took an interest, a genuine interest in you as a person. And I'm not saying this to be a pathetic loser that's sucking up to you. I'm saying this because I want you to understand. You cannot change who you really are. And there's nothing wrong with being genuinely intelligent and having an open mind like you do and there's nothing wrong with being who you are but the more you change yourself to fit in with those that would hate and despise you if they knew who you were uh, the, le the further you get away from who you are as a person and you want to be careful who you seek to become because that is how the world perceives you and not me, I've been able to see past much of the, um, the projection. Uh, however, not everybody is as understanding as I am. And I know there's a reason you've kept me around. And it's not just because I'm annoying. <laughs> so, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, be happy with being who you are. A nerd. A very intelligent young lady with very real interests that are more important than fascism and more important than political crap. You have to understand, politics is transient. Politics is of the masses. If you wish to be who you are, a great person, then you cannot simply melt into the masses. You are not one of the masses. You are not a, quote, normie. You are who you are. And you're a fabulous young lady. This video is for my estranged South American friend. <laughs> I want to let you know, okay? I get it. You don't want to talk to me anymore. Okay, it's been six months. I'm a very persistent person, but even I know when, uh, <laughs> when somebody doesn't want to talk to me. What I do want to let you know is um, after learning, and I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to embarrass you, I just have no other way of saying this. After spending time trying to learn how your brain worked, and I had to find out through other resources because obviously I wanted to find out how you thought through you, I wanted to learn about you from you. Um, I understand more about how you need time to chill out, time to recover, time to regroup. I understand that you have um, certain, I, I just hope I never caused you to have any severe issues, okay? Furthermore, we do think very much alike. I, I didn't understand what you meant by we're very different. You didn't mean it the way I thought you meant it. I thought you meant it culturally and things of that nature. The, all that is superficial as far as I'm concerned and probably as far as you're concerned too. Your page, um, when you had it, Koret Vartutam, that was as though I made it. You're drawn to the same things as me, as you know. Um, call it Satanism, call it uh, neoclassicalism, call it whatever you will. You are drawn to the things that I'm drawn to. We think the same at a much deeper level than the cultural or the religious or what have you. The truth is, I understand what you're, you were saying. Obviously, I don't care, like you might think I would. No matter what, I'm your friend, okay? Regardless of what happens. I've always joked about that, you know, regardless of what happens in your personal life, regardless what happens in my personal life. The thing is, you are a very unique person in the sense you've never been mean to me, which you're probably regretting at this point. But you're the only person I know, and I've, I know I've gotten you quite angry, and I've seen you be mean to other people. But for whatever reason, you've never been mean to me, not once, okay? And you did try to keep, you really, really tried to keep communication open with me. And I know you said it's because I'm so smart and you love the way I think and all this. 
No girl keeps communication open with a guy because they're that smart, okay? I think that you do recognize that we are very similar at a deeper level than most people. And that <laughs> the, the potential for our friendship will never go away. Of course, unfortunately, you have to understand this. For one year, the first year I was talking to you, I never even tried to be with you. And the reason why is because you're way out of my league. What happened was, after I saw the kind of guys that you seemed drawn to, I didn't want to see you end up with some stupid Italian or some sp uh, special person uh, <laughs> uh, that was that would treat you badly. And I planned on coming down anyway, and I was this close to coming down. And I will be coming down there eventually, but I won't be coming to see you. I promise that. I won't look you up. I won't bother you. The truth is, I just didn't want to see you end up in a relationship that would be bad for you. And I got to the point where I'm like, hey, if she's attracted to these losers, she'll be attracted to this loser. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry. I, I am, obviously, I'm not going to stop being attracted to you. You're, like, like I said when I met you, <laughs> you're perfect. Phys aesthetically, you're, you're perfect. Okay? And I'm a very, um, my attraction to you is a very primal attraction. Uh, it is not, it's not easy for me to not be attracted to you, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean I'm not your friend and it doesn't mean I won't always be your friend, okay? It, it does complicate things and even if we never talk to each other ever again, I'm always your buddy and you know that and I know you know that. So if you ever do want to talk to me after you cool down, after you regroup, and after everything, I don't think we should really be friends on social media because I get ferociously jealous of these little frickin' uh, the, the human garbage <laughs> It seems attracted to you. But I've never been mad at you. I've been frustrated, very frustrated, because I make the mistake of thinking about you like a regular person. And you're not a re And I don't mean that in a bad way. As you can tell, my brain don't work the same way as other people's either. You're super brilliant and super talented, and you have a skill set that would make MacGyver jealous. You don't know who MacGyver is because you're too little. Uh, MacGyver was the dude that Patty and Selma on The Simpsons are obsessed with. You won't know otherwise, but you'll remember it from that because I know you like The Simpsons. Just know I will always care about you. Uh, this channel was literally made for you, and this stuff that you see, this Eva Peron stuff, and Justicialism stuff, and La Raza Cosmica, I don't do this to kiss your butt. I don't kiss anybody's butt. I would kiss your butt, but not anymore, because you probably wouldn't want that. But the fact of the matter is, is this. I do that because you turned me on to these things, and I agree with them. I might not agree with them 100%, but rationally and logically, these things make sense. And, um... I really like the concept of La Raza Cosmica, which you, even in uh, Corat Vertutum, that is what you were reaching for, whether you even know it or not, you were, you were reaching for that. And you think like I do, you turned me on to things that I didn't even know I agreed with, because I didn't know they existed. And that's what I like about you. You enriched me as, on a personal level, and I wanted more of that. I wanted to get to know you personally, and I understand that I scared the living heck out of you. I understand that I bothered you, and I only hope that I didn't cause you any any personal issues after I learned about these things. You have to understand, I didn't know any of this. And the more I learn, and I still make the mistakes of thinking that you're just like everybody else. You've never been mean to me. You've never... Whenever you would get quiet or stop talking to me, I didn't know you needed time to cool off. I thought that you were never talking to me again, so I made the stupid mistake of becoming exceptionally persistent at getting you to talk to me, and that was the exact worst possible thing I could do, and obviously I still do it, which I'm sorry, that's just who I am. If we become friends again, obviously I would not recommend on social media, I will have to work on that, and obviously I screwed that up last time. <laughs> just take care, honey. And I wish you the best. I, I, I just hope you're happy. That's all. Hey, kiddo. Obviously, if you're keeping track of what the conversation was there, um, you know what's going on. Uh, I did want to let you know. I Obviously, you know I knew everything already. I figured it out on my own. Um, unfortunately, I didn't expect it to be confirmed with somebody with a shoe size higher than their IQ. <laughs> 
I want you to know that I'm very happy for you, okay? Which I already let you know. And in a lot of ways, it does actually make me feel kind of good, because I didn't think you just stopped talking to me for no reason. I knew that there was a reason, you know what I mean? I knew you wouldn't just stop talking to me, because the excuses seemed kind of silly and whatnot. Look, obviously I regret everything going the way it did. Um, you know that. Just know that I, I will always care about you. I'll never give up on our friendship. That would be silly of me. Um, and it would be ridiculous of me to be mad at you, of course. I hope you know that. I never was mad at you. I got frustrated because, well, you know why. I hope eventually at some point uh, you'll talk to me, but I, I completely understand why you can't. You know that. I, I don't expect you to talk to me. If, if that's your boyfriend, Jesus Christ, I don't know what to tell you, okay? But I do know that, um, you know, you're a good girl. That's, that's what you are. You were very sweet to me. You were very sweet to me when I needed somebody to be sweet to me, okay? And um, I, I, I'm very happy for you. Um, clearly, I'm not going to give up on our friendship. I'm obviously not going to try and see you. If you follow the comments, please, please, please read everything. I was very adamant that I'm not trying to break you up with anybody or anything like that. I, I know what's going I knew what was going on, as you know. I just, I would never do anything to hurt what you got going on, okay? And uh, I'm also not going to give up on our friendship, but I'm not going to do anything, you know, stupid as, of course, and I may not even come down to, to um, Argentina, I was never planning on seeing you if I never had your permission to see you, you know that, I know you know that, um, good luck with everything, I don't know where you meet somebody like that, but good God, <laughs> I wish you the best of luck in life, and I care greatly for you, bye sweetie. Hey kid, I want to clarify a couple things with you, okay? You know I've never misrepresented myself to you in any way, shape, or form. You also know that I've never purposely been disrespectful toward you. There's a couple times I have lost my temper, and I may have taken things a little too far with how I've worded them, but they were never meant to hurt you, or to hurt your feelings, or to disrespect you, okay? Um, look, I don't know who this dude is, but I'll tell you what, he obviously is far more potentially dangerous than I am, and I'll put it to you like this, I plan on coming, well, I'm not coming down to see you, as of right now, I plan on coming down to enjoy myself, if I get to see you, I get to see you. That's one positive. I don't plan on seeing you, and I don't think you really want to see me anymore. In fact, I'm pretty sure you don't want to see me anymore. But my point is, whoever this dude is, takes it up on himself to try and intimidate people out of talking to you, okay? Misrepresents facts about your life to the point where you have to correct the fact that, no, these are not true statements that this person is making. And other things. I don't know what's going on, honestly, but, and I'm not naming you, I slip up here and there, I almost slip up, but I catch myself. You need to know that I do genuinely care about you, and uh, that's it. I mean, we're friends. That's what I consider us to be as friends. I don't know if you still consider us to be friends. If you consider me to be a horrible, rotten person because I'm honest with you, that's fine. If you consider me to be terrible because I won't genuflect before you, that's also fine. The point is, I know that we share many similarities with one another, and you know it as well. And we could have a very good friendship, okay? I, you used to have a very good sense of humor, and you used to be very playful. I don't know if you still are or not. Have a good weekend, or what's left of it.
Hey kid, I just wanted to say that I want to wish you a very late and happy birthday. Okay, I know I'm late, but it's better than being early. I remember the first time I wished you a happy birthday early. You weren't very crazy about that. Um, I just want you to know, uh, if my theory is right about who that dude is, I mean, after all, he even knew about your affinity for empanadas, uh, chances are, um, if that's right, I feel really bad that you have to put up with somebody like that in your daily life on a daily basis, probably, okay? Furthermore, what I want to point out is this. I'll be down before you know it, and it's going to be totally up to you whether you see me or not, but what that person needs to understand, I'm not coming down to do anything with you that you don't want to do. And the fact that he gets so worked up lets me know that there's a good chance that you do want to say hi to me, okay, or hola. So the point that I would like to make is this. I think it would be absolutely wonderful if we, if we saw one another. Um, and what he needs to understand is there are far cheaper, far safer, and far um, more uh, cost-effective ways for me to exploit a lovely young Latina if I wanted to. I could just get a, Trump, uh, a job at one of Trump's concentration camps for juvenile border crossers or something, you know? But, and that was a joke, that was, <laughs> I was not being serious there. Um, anyhow, just know I really care a great deal about you. Um, some of the things I want you to know though, uh, a lot of people, including you, have told me that it would be a waste of my time for me to come and see you. That was going back many, many, many moons ago. You said that you were a waste of my time, which is very sad to me, okay? Because somebody as wonderful as you are, okay, saying that about somebody as lowly as me. You see, one of the big differences between me and other people, I know where I stand, okay? Other people arrogantly go through life and treat people very poorly, like that gentleman that I argued with, and unfortunately I sank to their level and used very colorful language. Um, some people don't understand their place in life. I understand my place in life. I also understand your place, and you are a wonderful person. I almost slipped up and said your name again. Um, it would be an honor to meet you. I don't think I will be meeting you, but I will be down before you know it, okay? And it's going to be its going to be a life experience for me. I'm not getting any younger, okay? That's for one, I'm 37 now. Okay, so I'm not getting any younger. I might as well do this before I'm too old and crazy to do it, you know what I mean? Or I should say I should do it while I'm still crazy enough to do it. Anyhow, happy birthday, and I don't count on seeing you, but I do think that it would be a really cool thing if we did see one another. Happy birthday, kiddo. Bye. So, I wanted to make a video. See, somebody I know that worked at my former employer uh, quit the job months and months and months ago, and they said that she was still on the payroll. Now, I want to make this very clear. This person did not ask me to make this video. Please make that. I want to make that well understood. This person does not know I'm making this video and won't know I'm making this video until it's posted. But the thing is, this happened to me after I was fired. Now, about my firing, what I want to point out is this is what's interesting about my firing and also the, the trolling on my channel that most likely came from this place. Um, what's interesting is this. So, I get fired and like four months later when I try to apply for, you know, welfare uh, because I had to get food, I couldn't because the company still had me on its payroll, just like this young this uh, young lady that quit her job and was still on the payroll, and they're telling her everything has to be in writing. Now, when I was fired for insubordination, they didn't take me off the payroll, so I'm still on their payroll, and now this woman, she's not taken off their payroll after she quits, and they give her some bullshit excuse that everything has to be in writing. They try, and this is the thing, they try and push off their own inadequacy at handling their books because their 990 is all screwed up too, and I'm going to leave a link to that, the 990, uh, and because they can't keep proper track of their records, they try to push it off on their clients with these surprise medical bills, and they try and push it off on their employees saying, oh, well, you need everything in writing, blah, 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 blah. Look, you fired me. You goddamn well know I'm not on your payroll anymore, okay? So how, how was that? That was the same mistake, except I was fired. So why's that got to be in writing? That should be on, in writing on your side. Another thing was my firing, 
my insane boss um, comes down and, uh, you know, I will say her name. Her name's, uh, no, you know what, I won't because she's probably a little bit litigious because, you know, she uh, she rocks the six-pointed star, if you know what I mean. But my point is, is this. The point is, this crazy lunatic comes down as I'm trying to leave, is smacking my vehicle, smacking the front of my van, and smacking it very hard. And I had to tell her, I'm going to have to call the police on you if you don't stop attacking my vehicle. So I had to cut my wheel all the way to the right and go around her, and then apparently, from what I was told by a number of people that I still talk to, she told everyone that I work with that I tried to, quote, run her over. So let's put it this way. I allegedly, and this is the thing, I regret, every day I regret not calling the police on her. Every day. Because that would have settled this. So let's get this straight. So she alleged that I tried to run her over, but yet I was fired for insubordination, the police were never called, and I successfully got unemployment. They didn't challenge me on unemployment. Okay, so that, yeah, that's totally sensible. Okay, I get fired for uh, insubordination, I get unemployment, wasn't challenged on it, and uh, allegedly I tried to run her over, but she didn't call the police. That makes perfect sense. Okay, and the thing is, this is the same woman that threatened me, uh, my boss, not the woman that I know, my boss, threatened me, uh, reminding me over and over again that she had my mental health record. Now, the trolling on here, I would, I would, I was suspicious that it was somebody from that place. And I confronted a friend of mine that works there. Uh, he probably is no longer a friend at this point after uh, the way I treated him. And I would apologize to him, except for the fact that I know he knows more than he's letting on. Um, so the thing is, they start mentioning things about my job in the comments section. They start mentioning things about me in the comments section, okay? And they start mentioning things about people I used to work with in the comments section of my videos. And then, I told the one dude, the, the dude that's gaslighting the hell out of me, my friend, uh, and the people on here are gaslighting the hell out of me that I don't know who it is. So what's the person say the exact next day? I know you don't know who the hell I am and you can't prove it. Taken right from my conversation with this gentleman. A number of things I've said back and forth with this guy were repeated in the comments section of my videos, which tells me this person either knows that person works with that person. And I know they're hold, they were holding meetings at the point where I was making these videos uh, to uh, basically to how they would deal with my videos, okay? Because they can't deal with them. All I'm doing is telling the truth. And I'm going to leave links to various reviews of this company by various consumers and various former employees to show I'm not making this stuff up. The problem is nobody would believe that a place of business, let alone a mental health clinic, could act this way. That's the problem. Nobody believes this. That's how I became friends with that chick, okay? The chick that quit her job a few months ago was because she was getting sexually harassed and uh, sexually belittled at work and all sorts of problems. And uh, nobody would believe that these things were happening unless they actually worked there, unless they witnessed it themselves. And unless they, they understood the level of nepotism, the way it works there, it's a, a series of nepotism and covering up of lies and, and all sorts of stuff. And it's, it's a really nasty organization, an organization that nobody wants to work for, which is why they can't keep people to save their lives. It's not because I'm making videos. The reason they can't keep people is people actually work there and actually understand, and then they go tell people, no, no, you don't want to work there. You don't want to work there. So my point is, is that, and this is the other thing, and this is the other thing. They purposely riled me up, okay? And I, I have thoroughly apologized to my, uh, my friend from Argentina. Purposely pissed me off, did everything they could. Now, I don't have proof that it's them, but I don't know who else it could be. But this is the kind of people they are, uh, purposely working to angry, anger me up, to tell me lies about things, so that I get very angry. And they go, oh, well, you, like, like I said, they repeat things in my comment section from private conversations with me and somebody that works there, okay? And they, this is the thing, they insulted my ex-girlfriend, 
who I had to take care of after she had to be resuscitated three times, okay, because she had a pulmonary embolism and they're insulting me and her. They insulted this young lady in Argentina uh, by trying to get me all riled up at her. And this is the thing. My friend, that's no longer my friend, and I respect the fact that she's not my friend because of how I behaved, it's unforgivable. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, this young lady, the, fr the one that I was friends with in Argentina, she has her own issues that were unfortunately probably exasperated greatly by the work of these people pretending to be her family member and her friends working to get me angry. Uh, this organization uh, threatened to use my mental health record against me while I worked there. Uh, my boss did. Uh, they alleged that I tried to run somebody over, which was not true. And then even more importantly, while I'm talking to my friend that works there, my so-called friend, might be my friend, might not be my friend, he stated that years and years and years and years ago, they, when, when I, before I worked there, I was a client there, and they called the police on me because there was a disagreement with me and one of the African-American ladies that worked there because she didn't like some of the paraphernalia. I was living in a, a program that they ran. She didn't like some of the paraphernalia in my room that might have had some symbols that she didn't like. And uh, I had to go. They were purposely not giving me my rent, which varied a little bit every month due to electric usage and things like that because they were trying to kick me out. And they did kick me out eventually, which uh, basically did lead to my homelessness. Uh, but the thing is, long story short, they tried to get him to tell the police that I tried to run him over. Okay? So this is the thing. There's all these threats, all these threats and all these accusations and all these lies. No proof. No proof. Like I said, I was fired for insubordination because I went to human resources over harassment from the same gentleman that harassed the woman that quit a few months ago. He's enshrined. He's their little saint. But the fact of the matter is, this place does what it does. And this is why people don't want to work there. This is why they're going under. And they are going under. And I, this is the thing. They, they have a comment in their new employee handbook that they can find people's negative opinions online about them. That's the idea. People want you to find their negative reviews online. You don't understand that. We don't like you. We don't want you to exist anymore because of the harm that you do to your employees and your clients and the society, the, the county at large. You're a horrible organization that needs to not be in existence anymore. You help no one and hurt a lot of people. That's the bottom line. And I'm going to leave links to the various reviews in the description so people can see what a shit agency this is and the harm that it does to the greater community. And that's all for this video note for my former um, employer, Pendel Mental Health Center. Now what I want to point out is this, I remember over two years ago, right around when Eliana stopped talking to me, there was a, uh, a little message, a uh, comment, a reply to one of her comments telling her to leave me alone because I'm a dangerous psycho. And uh, since then I've been hounded by trolls that use similar vernacular as to these idiots, okay? Um, a lot of these people that are harassing me now use similar vernacular to those people. Now, what I want to say is this. As people quit your organization, I gain more and more people that want to take action against you because they have first-hand knowledge of things like sexual harassment that has been covered up by human resources. And also, I have evidence now of uh, basically physical harassment uh, and I have an eyewitness of what happened, physical harassment of me in real time, okay, that took place. And I have a witness to that. I also know that these videos are being monitored. I also know that when I started initially making videos about mental health, there was a meeting held to see what could be done about my videos and what could be done about my reviews on things like Yelp. Well, there's nothing that can be done because I'm not breaking the law and I'm only telling the truth about your organization, which is basically a little more than a, it's just rife with nepotism and the covering up of sexual harassment against your female employees. Okay, so I know all about it. I also know who, if anybody, is responsible for communicating with Eliana. And don't think that I'm going to take it lightly if I find out 
Now I know that people in this organization are watching this because I know that things have been mentioned at the office regarding these videos. Um, now the thing is, I know this because I still speak to people that work there. <laughs> That's what you don't understand. I also know that a former friend of mine, of somebody that I thought was a friend of mine that I'd known since I was 10 years old that helped get me the job there, was feeding information to this organization, uh, to you guys, to screw with me. I know a lot more than you think. And the thing is, as people quit, as people talk to me, I'm gaining more and more people that are fed up with your organization. And yeah, you cover things up pretty good. But there's only, I also know that the individual that probably did talk to Eliana also is an individual that was responsible for me being fired by spreading rumors about me and then human resources encouraging me to quit and not allowing me and, and basically forcing me to be fired because I refused to quit. And uh, Human Resources not ever taking down any, any proof that I was at Human Resources. And that individual is also friends with the county commissioner, and that's what protects his crappy little job. I also know that this place has tried to destroy other people's lives. So keep it up. Keep up the bullshit. Because eventually, you will get caught. And if this is what happened, um, if it, Eliana, if you're watching, what you need to understand is if these people... Uh, told you things about me that weren't true. I can promise you they weren't true if you choose to believe them I don't know what to tell you except that's your choice. That's your personal choice I can't make your choices for you if I could obviously everything would be a lot different than it is right now But unfortunately, I can't do that um, If you know something about this and you feel moved to tell me, please do I don't understand why you're not talking to me, especially with the way these people are behaving Take care, hon. And as for my former employer, go to hell. <laughs> so I wanted to do a video about gang stalking, and it's going to be a little bit different than most people on YouTube's videos on gang stalking in the sense that I believe it actually exists, and I believe I might actually be a victim of it. Many months ago, about a, about a year and a half ago, people on Facebook had started uh, friend requesting me and I'll accept anybody's friend request usually and they were telling me that I was a victim of gang stalking on Facebook I'm not on Facebook on YouTube here which is the uh, the people commenting on my videos like chimichanga chimmy and it's time for your pill gringo which explains the ridiculously fake names now what's funny is over a year well yeah about a year ago or just no it's about yeah, about a year ago, I would go for a morning walk for about an hour every morning, last October. And I'd be followed by cars. And I just assumed at the time I was having an issue with my former employer. So I had just assumed, and I'm not saying it's not my former employer, because I think it might be. Um, they'll have cars follow you. At the time, I had assumed it was just a private investigator or something they were having to break my balls. That's what I thought, because I'm sane, and that's what I thought. Um, so I would go for walks and cars would park and wait at, his, at the same corner every morning. And I was assuming, you know, it's a private investigator, some kid getting their, you know, somebody getting their kid from school, what have you. Or they'd park at the park and wait there and they'd write stuff down, which is odd because not many people write stuff down in this day and age of cell phones. And they'd take pictures of me. And I would assume that's what made me assume it was a private investigator. Why would somebody take pictures of me unless they're a private investigator? Because it's not in my mind, normal people don't do things like this. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing anything incriminating or weird, so let them take pictures. I'm not a private person. I don't care. As I said, I'll accept anybody's friend request on Facebook. So a lot of people kept telling me I was a victim of gang stalking, what have you. And then the other day, there was a, um, a lady on YouTube that responded to Chimichanga Chimmy explaining that there were laws against this and that, you know, this is gang stalking. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'm going to look back into gang stalking. I already did. It sounded nuts because a lot of the links are nuts. A lot of the people that believe they're being gang stalked are absolutely insane. But that's one of the goals of gang stalking is to drive the person insane. Interestingly enough, the more I knew... Uh, I moved into my apartment uh, last October, and somebody had stolen, and this is no joke, somebody had stolen a thing of popping corn, like that you would make popcorn with. 
So I went to my, and I didn't immediately um, do anything because I'm not like that. I'll just, you know, in my view, I'll defend my property if somebody comes in my door. So a couple more times, things had been moved and taken. Um, a, a DVD player with some uh, pornographic movies had been taken from my apartment and put back where it was. And I'm like, ah, maybe I'm nuts. Maybe I just misplaced it. But then a couple days later, a woman, because what I would do is I would leave for the day and come back. Well, this day I didn't leave. And this woman uh, tried to open my door with a key to my apartment. And this is one of the things that gang stalkers do is they gain access to apartments. So I'm, I was home. So I answered the door and I'm like, who the hell are you? Because they were trying to open my door with a key. So I assumed former tenant, you know. I go to the office, and at first the uh, the young lady in the office thought it was her cleaning lady. Uh, she she was Hispanic. My the cleaning lady is Hispanic, and she goes, maybe it was my cleaning lady. And she goes, did she look Spanishy? <laughs> and I go, no, this was a white chick with a key to my apartment. And then she goes, well, you don't. And this is I'm quoting the girl that you know, the girl that was the uh, leasing agent. She goes, well, you don't have any white neighbors. And I'm like. No, I don't. <laughs> so, I don't know. So then they changed the key, the lock to my, um, you know, they changed my lock and what have you. That stopped. But it is interesting. It gets to higher and higher levels. There was a gentleman that called himself a Russian robot that was harassing me and actually harassing my friend from Argentina, uh, calling her all sorts of racial epithets and things of that nature. And he was posing posing as an alt writer, uh, and then he was mad at me that I was pretending to be a actual, like a, a national socialist at the time I was, you know, but this is the stuff that was going on as it was building up, and it's, uh, it also explains why my friend from Argentina might be ignoring me and blocking me and things like that after being so adamant that she didn't know these people, but it also explains why they know things about her, because they could be people in her life that have been turned on to this. It's a very interesting thing, and I do believe I'm a victim of this. I also believe I know who's responsible. The problem is, if you're driving me nuts, it takes a lot to drive me nuts. I don't really care. I'm very physically capable. Uh, and, but with the guy with Russian robot, that's when he, att he attempted to threaten to swat me. And I didn't know what swatting was, because I'm not an 11-year-old kid. And then my, uh, at the time, my ex-girlfriend's son who's, uh, he just turned, oh, 20-ish or 21-ish, something like that, I don't know when he was born, but he explained to me what swatting was, it's this thing that video gamers do to, um, basically call the police on somebody and have the police murder the person, and, uh, it's very interesting, very interesting, um, and I, I, obviously, I, I wouldn't believe this if I didn't see the things happening with myself, uh, with my own eyes and put it together myself. Um, obviously I just woke up, but the goal is to make the person look crazy. I already look crazy, so you can't really make me look crazier. But, um, if this is the case, it's very bizarre, uh, that I would be targeted except for the fact that my former employee, or uh, my former employer, very much dislikes me for whistleblowing, which is one of the things that is a targeted individual, is whistleblowing. Uh, of course, they're not going to stop me from saying anything. In, in fact, they'll just make me say more and get more vocal <laughs> because that's my character and I don't care. And the thing is, if people think they're going to physically intimidate me, that's the other thing, the physical intimidation that took place where my, uh, my ex-girlfriend uh, visited it and was at a food bank. Uh, so my ex-girlfriend was there while the person that was responsible for having me fired at my job years ago, tried to physically intimidate me, but he's a little bitch, and that's what's funny, is my ex-girlfriend, so I just kept my head turned, and I didn't, I ignored that he was like a centimeter away from the back of my neck, and I could feel his breath on the back of my neck, he was trying to get me to react, and that's one of the things that these people do, but I have a witness to that, which is my ex-girlfriend, so it's very interesting, it also explains how people from Argentina knew things about my personal life that happened here, if they're even from Argentina, but they also know per things about my friend's personal life, which is interesting, because they might have been people from her personal life lured into this, or paid to do this, or something like that. 
And it sounds absolutely insane, but it's all plausible. And the reason it's plausible is because this is what people do. After working in mental health, I wouldn't believe things like this really were possible. But the thing is, after seeing some of the people I worked with and things like that, yeah, I think this is very plausible. Um, and I'd like to thank the person that commented in my video, who I thought was crazy, by the way, because I subscribed to her channel, and then she thought I was I was secretly stalking her or something. But no, 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 I wasn't. I just unfollowed her. Uh, of course, she probably was a victim of this, or a perceive, or she perceives herself to be a victim of this. That's the problem. This is the perfect thing for paranoid people to be paranoid. Because it fits in. It's for people looking for patterns and things. It allows them to put these patterns together. It's a schizophrenic dream. But the fact of the matter is, it seems to be very real in the same sense. Very real. Especially with the thing with my apartment, the car following me, stuff like that. And uh, that's it's very interesting. Very interesting. I wanted to do a follow-up on my video for gang stalking. I've been doing more research into this topic, and what I want people to understand, this is the problem I think that a lot of, quote, targeted individuals have. What people need to understand is this is not taking place by reptilians or extraterrestrials or things of that nature. I think what happens in most gang stalking situations is these groups of people targeted, they target people that are on the brink of psychosis which is funny because like I do have mental health problems related to anxiety PTSD and a lot of things that make my life very difficult but I'm not psychotic and I'm not delusional and that's the thing is regardless of how hard the people on the um that are doing what they're doing in the comments sections of my videos and harassing me in life regardless of what they do it's not enough to make me paranoid, and it's not enough to make me afraid, because I know that if I'm physically confronted, whoever's physically confronting me is probably going to have a hard time. And I'm not saying that because I'm looking for physical violence or anything like that, I'm not. But the thing is, that's why I think I'm unique in this situation. I also don't fall for conspiracy nonsense, especially things that involve extraterrestrials and cults and crap like that, because nine times out of ten it's baloney. Um, and that's the thing is, what people need to look for, what I noticed with the people that were harassing me online are key things. One, things that happened with my job, it always went back to my job, things that focused on my mental health. I was um, hospitalized a lot as a youth, which people... See, the thing is, I worked at the mental health agency that used to provide services to me as a youth. So the people that work there actually have access to my mental health record. So I noticed a lot of things were geared toward my mental health record, my childhood record, things of that nature. Okay, now the reason that this thing revolved around my friend from Argentina is because I really don't give a crap about anything. And these people realized that they found something that I cared about. And they tried to use that to destroy me, but the problem is what they don't understand is my life has been destroyed for many, 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 many decades now. Probably from the time I was born, I haven't had much of a life. Now the thing is, that's what people that consider them targeted themselves targeted individuals need to be looking for. They need to be looking for these things that can be traced to who did they offend. I offended that organization. I offended that organization by the things that I said, the truth that I said about how they abuse their, um, their basically their stance in society. Their, uh, their way they abuse the fact that the federal government entrusts them with a lot of money to help the homeless people, and it's squandered. And there are certain people that work there, it's very great with nepotism. These are things I did to offend the people at that organization. And this is why the people at that organization are doing what they're doing. How did they gather information on my friend in Argentina? I don't know. That could be any number of ways, but a thousand dollars goes a pretty long way in Argentina, so I wouldn't put that out of the question. My point is, 
is that in order for people to take people seriously, they need to grab a hold of reality and stop thinking in terms of reptilian overlords and alien conspiracies and government conspiracies. The truth is with government conspiracies, most people, including me, are not important enough for governments to worry about them. But I also think it's important that people understand a lot of this gang stalking stuff, it seems to revolve around false accusations of pedophilia, false accusations of homosexuality, false accusations of degeneracy, things of that nature. And I mean, I'm going to kind of end this video by saying, you know, Eliana, I'm very sorry about everything I said. I was put under a lot of stress by these people. I'm sorry some things came out the way they did. I apologize to your family. I, I really do genuinely apologize to you if you don't want to see me, and I don't think you do, and that's fine. As I said the whole time, that's fine. I just never wanted to give up on the chance of seeing you and being your friend. That's the honest truth, and I'm not coming down there to see you. The only reason I'm coming down to Argentina is I really can't do much else, and I already know what I'm doing in Argentina and where I'm going and what things cost and things of that nature. So that's why I have to come down. So the thing was with the gang stalking and why they used this person against me was because they knew I did care about her. And that's why they used her against me to the point that they did. I'd like to give a little advice to my viewers. Much of what people do not understand about me and my friend from Argentina, whom, honestly, I hope she's moved on from me. Not that there was ever anything between her and I, nor did I ever say there was anything between her and I. But yes, I hope she is, honestly, I hope she's found somebody, I hope she's happy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but the point that I would like to make is this. What the people commenting on my videos don't understand is this channel was literally made for Eliana, so she could get to know me before I came down. As for the people, oh, if a girl ignores your private messages, blah, 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 blah. No, honestly, she might not have been interested in me in that way, but you don't understand the whole story. And the fact of the matter is, the advice I'm getting, if you have to pull up Chinese astrology and other hocus pocus, to hell with that bullcrap, okay? The fact of the matter is, that last video, the one on um, targeted individuals, the reason I apologize to Eliana and her, and her family wasn't because I was trying to get her attention. Whether or not she's watching the video, I really don't know or care. The reason I mentioned her in that video is I owe her an apology because people have been misleading me as to who they are and where they are from. A number of individuals, gang stalking me here on, on YouTube, have stated that they were family members of hers. And I am starting to realize where they're getting the information and how they're getting it through the use of spyware. And I know one creepy ass individual who unfortunately was a friend of mine that helped me get my job at that agency that I am pretty sure is the one doing this. And I'm pretty sure he's behind a lot of it. So the fact of the matter is people do not understand the depth of what's going on here nor do I care whether they understand it or not. As for Eliana, Eliana was an innocent person, it seems, that was sucked into this through people around me that don't like me using certain things to get information off of my, compu off of my uh, devices to make it appear as though they knew Eliana when they probably don't know Eliana. And that's the point that I'd make. So there's a lot more to this than people understand, okay? And the fact of the matter is, even if Eliana hates me, even if Eliana does harm to me, which she's not going to, but the thing is, even if that were the case, it doesn't matter. Look, I'm literally old enough to be the girl's father. I'm 13 years older than her. Clearly, she doesn't want to be involved with me in that way. What people don't understand is when somebody cares about somebody because of their intellectual capacity and the character which they at least seem to possess, 
Eliana, I hope that really was your true character that you were showing me, and if it wasn't your true character, I think it's very sweet that you took it upon yourself to try to make me feel as though you were the way that you expressed yourself. And yes, I do care about her, and this channel was originally, prior to me making any public videos, originally was a number of private videos I made Eliana, and I wanted her to get to know me before I came down. Okay, so this channel, essentially, is Eliana's channel. <laughs> but it's not really, because I'm using it for, obviously, politics and everything else. But as far as private messages and all this nonsense, no, that's not what it was about with her. The goal that she and I had many years ago was for me to come down and for us to spend time together. Unfortunately, things came up in my personal life that basically screwed that up. And that's the story of me and Eliana. For the people that are so curious and wish to express so many deep thoughts involving Chinese astrology about, oh, personal profiling with that Chinese astrology, you know, whatever, go throw some I Ching sticks at the frickin' wall or some crap like that, whatever. Uh, tomorrow I will make an excellent video on spyware and psycho and what actually what psychotronic weapons actually are and why psychotronic weapons probably are not being implemented by gang stalking groups take a little time to make a video on flying monkeys and my experience with flying monkeys flying monkeys are what i've had the most experience with on youtube now, a flying monkey is a popular psychology term which refers to people that basically will, they're basically, they work for the narcissist for a number of reasons. It could be they believe the narcissist or they're afraid of the narcissist, what have you. And uh, basically, they are the ones that attack you, uh, they try to spread rumors about you, and character assassination, uh, threaten you, which I've gotten a lot of death threats and things like that on here, and it's all a matter to make you agitated and to make sure that you don't find out who the real narcissist is, but I know who the narcissist at my former employer is, and she is crazy, and it also helps when my former friend stops calling me crazy, but wants me to make sure that I know that it's definitely not that person, you know who she is. And he, he absolutely didn't do anything. That's what he wants me to know. Which tells me, when I stop being crazy, and you start trying to tell me that I didn't do anything, and it's definitely not that person. It probably definitely is that person. And it definitely is you that did something. Whether or not you did it on purpose or not is a different story. Whether or not you did it because you were intimidated by a freaking woman, that's another story too. But let me get back on topic here. So, the way it works is the flying monkeys basically mob you and attack you on either in public or on social media. The beauty of social media, which is what my former employer has used, is it's very hard to gather evidence to use against the person. Lucky for me, I know people that uh, know things <laughs> that used to work there. So that's lucky for me, I do know that. Now I wanna get into why this is so difficult. The problem is if you're thinking like a sane person, and that's what kept me from realizing what was going on for so long, is because I think like a sane person, and emotionally healthy people do not do things like this. This is why I honestly did think it was my friend from Argentina's family trying to protect her from me, because that makes sense. Hell, if I was her family, I'd be trying to protect her from me, simply because I don't know me, and I'm also considerably older than her. These things make sense, but the things that were said in the attacks, which were personal information about me, that could only be obtained either through knowing me, or through gaining that, uh, through, you know, Gain, gaining this information off of my devices, kind of like when I let my friend that works at this employer, because I needed somebody with a scanner to email something to the consulate of Argentina for me, and I allowed him access to my email account 
and then things started blowing up quite badly for me on here on YouTube. And what it was is that was what they needed to access my accounts was my email and my email address information. So what happened was this got really crazy after that, um, which was last year, last April, and it got worse and worse and worse. Um, so. The reason that these people do this can be any number of reasons, as I covered. They could be afraid of the narcissist. They might believe the narcissist. They might just not like you. And that's how it works. But basically what this is, is this is an extension of the same thing that I dealt with at this employer. Um, it, it's isolation and intimidation is how they run their business. And what's funny about it is this. They, they run a business like this, uh, they intimidate and ostracize not just the employees but also the people that come there for help, and they wonder why everybody's leaving to either work at one of the other large mental health providers in the area, or leaving to go to one of the other large mental health providers in the area. And this is because they don't like the environment at this place. Um, and that's all for this video. I don't know what else to say other than that. But what I do want to point out, no, it's not all. I do want to point this out. You people want to try and spread lies about me that I'm some kind of dangerous, violent, racist psycho. You know what? You're going off of my juvenile behavior. My friend from Argentina changed me quite a bit with the, with the racism deal, okay? That changed my outlook quite a bit. As for violence, I haven't committed a violent act in, oh, 20 years, I think, something like that. So the thing is, but you do know this, you should know this, because you talk to my friend that works there. I would never participate at this point in time in an act of violence. The only way somebody would get me to be violent is if they, met, if they tried to aggress toward me, if they tried to attack me with physical violence, I would be given no recourse but to use physical violence to neutralize my, the threat to my life. But that's not what this is. This is just you insulting me and belittling me. And you tried to intimidate my friend and you probably did intimidate her family and tried to make them think that I was some kind of racist, violent lunatic. I'm not violent anymore. But being that you do talk to my friend, you know, and you do have access to my juvenile mental health record, you know that I am capable of some fantastic acts of violence. I just don't do that anymore because it's not worth the price to pay. It's not worth going to prison. It's not worth getting in trouble. It's not worth that hassle. But psychologically, violence ain't nothing to me. So... I would keep everything, if I were you, online like it is, and not, uh, you know, not start anything in the uh, physical realm. People that follow my channel might remember that I am not a big fan, or at least I wasn't a big fan of the MGTOW movement, MGTO, or whatever it is, men going their own way. I'm still not, but I did re-explore it after, um, you know, reassessing my life. For 16 years, I uh, was in a relationship that was non-productive, we'll just say. And I have remained close with that person. Uh, now, she... What the problem is... Uh, and this is the thing. Now, I, spar I started up a friendship with a young lady from Argentina um, online. And we both had made plans for me to come see her. Of course, things came up in my life, what have you. But the problem with men isn't so much men as it is women. And I'm not going to use any examples, although the chick from Argentina is a good example. Um, and it's not her fault. She's a victim of society. But the thing is, whether it's her fault or not, it's not my problem. And this is the issue. Women today, regardless of the country they're in, they seem to be um, all, quote, empowered. Women today are arrogant. 
women today are all narcissistic. As I was looking over the gang stalking, because I am a victim of gang stalking, but as I was looking over it, narcissism and gang stalking go hand in hand. And it seems that every woman under the age of 70 or 80 is a narcissist. They want everything their exact way, and if they don't get it, they don't want anything to do with you. And uh, I'm not an MGTOW, but what I would say is um, I have no problem not having a woman in my life and focusing on myself and, quote, self-ownership and things of that nature and, uh, you know, doing things, uh, you know, having sex with women as one night stands and things of that nature because that's the, that's the best you can expect to get from a woman these days. Or you can have a relationship, like I did for 16 years, that's uneventful, unfruitful, and miserable. Uh, it, it's not all bad. I mean, I'm still friends with that person. I'm good friends with that person. But the thing is, the relationship sucked. Because everything had to be exactly her way. Everything had to be the way she wanted it. And if it wasn't the way she wanted... And it's, it's not like people will say, oh, you're a simp. No, this is just the aspect of being in an active relationship with a woman. And I think this is why the MGTOW movement is right in one sense. And that is to swear off women, to swear off relationships, because the fact of the matter is there, there are no more healthy relationships. And it seems to be the most healthy to work on a relationship with yourself as opposed to working on a relationship with women. Uh, for example, the young lady in Argentina, she wouldn't let me get close. She seemed to want to be with me. She wanted to be with me, and many, time, many times she seemed to, but she would never let me get close enough. And the second she seemed to start opening up to me, she'd cut off contact with me. And that's the thing, is women today are so screwed up in the head that you cannot hope to have a healthy, productive relationship with them. Uh, so you put the people that are telling you you're a victim of gang stalking together with the fact that uh, the, there's the online harassment, which was attempted to make it look like a person that I was friends with had people harassing me. Okay, that was not the case because it didn't add up. They were claiming to know things, and they did know things about her, but they didn't seem to know enough about her to make it real, if you know what I'm saying. But they also knew things about me and my personal life. Now, this friend of mine lives on the other, literally the other side of the world. So if these are her neighbors and her friends. They're not going to know what I did in my personal life, okay? Because Argentina is quite a ways away from where I live in Pennsylvania. It's on the other side of the world. In fact, right now it's winter time here, it's summertime there. So I started putting everything together and realizing, now in reality, all of these things could be separate incidences. Um, so that's the thing, is it, it really starts when you start putting everything together. Now the helicopter thing, where does that come in? I watched a documentary from Vice on gang stalking and somebody mentioned the gang stalking helicopters. I was like, wow, this is, this is, this goes back to when the women were telling me, the women on Facebook that had friended me on Facebook, that the, um, that I was, that, that's actually the kicker back when I was started investigating this. And I'm like, yeah, this stuff's nuts. This, this isn't happening. It's not real. And then you start putting everything together. Now, people do find my videos on gang stalking to be quite interesting, uh, or at least that's what the views say. Um, however, I wanted to deal with two aspects of my unique situation that took place on YouTube, which thankfully has died down to virtually nothing, uh, which is interesting because it's after my Facebook profile got taken down so I can stop. Um, uh, what it was was, it seems what was happening on YouTube was a direct result of my truth telling regarding my former employer. Uh, the more I would do things to that employer uh, by exposing them for the horrible place of employment they are, their lack of desire to maintain a safe work environment for their employees or for their clients, because this is the thing. 
you have to remember in mental health, the, uh, the safety of the employee is important, but so is the safety of the consumer. And uh, that was a big thing. Uh, I, I did not like that when I worked there. They did not take into consideration the safety of the employees or the consumers. And they just weren't very good. They're not a very good place. But what I did notice was the more I would post about this employer on Facebook, the more I would get harassed on YouTube, which seemed to revolve around a friend of mine from Argentina. And the reason why I think is because my former employer, uh, they know that I'm a very simplistic person. I don't really do much. And they, they knew that this person was uh, my last shot, or at least at the time what I considered my last shot of getting the heck out of this part of my life and starting a new life in a new place and uh, fixing what I call perceived, uh, what I perceive as uh, just a very negative life I have in the United States. And uh, I know they know this because the one person that I thought I could trust, which was somebody I knew since I was 10 years old that works there who was responsible for helping me get the job, is they would implant certain words and certain events and references to certain events that only me and, and, and this is what threw me off and what made me think it was my friend from Argentina because it revolved around certain things I had told her. However, the, uh, the person making the, or persons, the people making the comments, uh, really slipped up because they started really going after me about my work and things that had happened at work and things, okay, so that's what gave them away. But also what gave them away was the fact that I'm getting off of uh, conversations with my friend that worked there. And they're immediately repeating what I'm saying over the phone to this dude. Uh, which originally, because I did not think this person could betray me. Although I was very, 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 very wrong. Because they're either, either this person did not betray me and this is somebody he thinks he can trust that he's disclosing what I'm saying to or it's somebody that he knows, or it's him himself repeating these things. Now, that's the thing, is the hidden speech of the narcissist is very interesting because it's something that only you can perceive. And then when you go and tell people, they think you're freaking crazy because it sounds crazy. That was my biggest part. My biggest issue with the whole gang stalking thing was that it is, it, it sounds so insane that anybody would target anyone like this. But that's because somebody like me wouldn't do that. And I used to have a saying <clears throat> when I worked in mental health, I used to tell my clients that, or actually my coworkers too, but my clients, I said, when they said, I just don't understand so-and-so. And I would say, that's good. When you start to understand crazy people, that's a sign that you're crazy. <laughs> and that's the thing is it takes, it's very difficult to understand a narcissistic mindset or the mindset of an abuser if that's not your mindset, if that's not your innate being. It is very hard to understand someone who is like that because that's not what you're thinking. That's not how you think. That's not how you process interpersonal relationships. However, that is how people like this process interpersonal relationships. And that's why it can be almost impossible to understand and why it was so hard for me to wrap my head around what was going on because I'm like, this just sounds really freaking nuts. And it is, from a, from a normal person's mindset, it is crazy. However, what happens is uh, from constant stress, which is what, what this is, this whole gang stalking thing, they try to drive people to suicide or drive people to self-destruction. Uh, luckily with me, there's not much lower I can go. <laughs> but what it is, is um, through the constant stress, lack of sleep, uh, improper diet, things of this nature that go with the narcissistic abuse, 
Uh, it causes imbalances in glucocorticoid steroids and things of this na- and and things of this nature, which cause reactions like dizziness, panic, heart palpitations, uh, worsening of asthma, things of that nature. Now this is, and I'm going to leave video links to this stuff, and that is what did happen to me over the course of the past, I'd say, decade since I I was fired in 2013, and my health, my mental health, went out the window when I worked there because it was constant. I'd be harassed on the phone if I was in the. I I worked on. Um, I was a mobile person. I worked in the field, so I'd be driving clients. You know. Uh, to community events, help them integrate into commu- into the community, take them to the mall, take them to uh, the library. A lot of the people I worked with were very severely uh, mentally uh, challenged, uh, very low IQ folks, um, and uh, severe drug addicts in recovery, things of that nature. Um, so I would take them into uh, you know, the community and things of that nature. And, uh, some of them, like some of the very bad off people may be going to the library two or three times a week. That was the thing that they needed to be doing to improve their functionality. Um, but in the meantime, while I'm transporting people here and there, I'm getting calls from my supervisors asking, where am I? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Just crazy crap. And then I'm, I'm getting reamed out um, at the uh, at the work for because my uh, my supervisors don't understand travel time, or they don't are like, well, how were you 15 minutes late to your next appointment? Well, it's because you make me schedule the appointments back to back, and uh, there's a thing called traffic. <laughs> but ultimately. Um, that's when I started uh, developing uh, severe uh, heart palpitations. As I said, I've always had some degree of heart palpitations uh, that were undiagnosed for a while, but later were diagnosed as tachycardia. But it got very bad uh, while I was working at this uh, at this organization. Uh, so, long story short, the uh, my my relationship was not the greatest either. I was in a very uh, turbulent relationship at the time, also, which did not help uh, with my ability. It was a high stress relationship, uh, a personal relationship, not a professional relationship. So after I got fired, um, then this stuff starts. Uh, literally, as soon as soon as I started talking to this chick. In Argentina, I start getting harassment. One of the first things was a person commented under one of her comments on one of my videos, uh, explaining to her that I'm, you know, a horrible, rotten, evil person, and that I'm a, you know, uh, stay away from me because I'm a racist psycho. I think was the term. Uh, I guess because they took a look at her, saw that she looked like Pocahontas, and decided, oh, well, this chick probably hates white people. Let's push this. Let's see if we can push her away from him by saying these things. And they acknowledged that they were my uh, my employer, which was they said they were my former supervisor. Uh, then when I questioned them as to which supervisor uh, and started naming names, they deleted the comment and told me I was crazy and they didn't know what I was talking about. These are all games played by these people on the social media sites. Um, And the thing is, what's interesting is they don't understand this is all saved forever in the ether that is the internet. Now, years later, the same thing happened and I did start thinking it was my friend uh, from our, well, my former friend. I think that I should probably start calling her my former friend because uh, she is not talking to me, probably because she thinks I'm bananas. Uh, not as bad as the Gwen Stefani song, but I'm pretty far gone, she probably thinks. So, everything combined, uh, especially with the poor diet, because I was trying that starch solution diet which was uh, very low in fat, which messes up your ability to manufacture certain necessary hormones. Uh, So what happened is due to the hormonal imbalance with the diet, combined with the high stress, combined with the, uh, uh, what really did me in was when I couldn't exercise uh, three to six hours every day. That's what did me in, because I think that was the only thing keeping my body well 
Uh, and that's when I started developing the, the severe panic disorder. Um, I actually did reach the point where I started thinking I was going psychotic. I really did. But that's the goal of these people, is to make you believe that you're losing your mind. Uh, and they succeeded for a while, I will say that. But not completely, because I know what reality is, and that was the thing. You can't tell me. And this is the thing, my friend, my so-called friend, was gaslighting the hell out of me, trying to convince me that I didn't know what I was talking about, that uh, everybody there likes me, even though I know from people that were actively working there about how much that place hates me, how they hold meetings to destroy me. <laughs> and this is just one guy. And that's when I started, when I started looking into the gang stalking and the whistleblowing and how whistleblowers are taken care of with this and things of that nature, I started understanding what was really going on. And it's a real shame because um, no matter what, I'm stuck going to Argentina once the COVID breaks uh, <laughs> because I was stupid enough to buy a ticket. Uh, but essentially, I will be going to Ecuador is where I should be settling, I think, is in Ecuador. But the thing is, and uh, that, that plays, that plays to, the, uh, to my benefit anyway, because honestly, my friend, even though I, I do care a great deal for my friend in Argentina, it was very stressful to try and communicate with her due to her own personal issues. Uh, and also, um, I like Mestizas better than Castizas, and furthermore, What's even better is, you know, the age of consent is much lower in Ecuador, too. <laughs> but ultimately, what's funny about it is this. Uh, what's interesting is, despite all this, I'm doing much better. I'm doing better. They alienated my friend, but honestly, what's interesting about that, that actually reduced the stress in my life. So it's, it's kind of funny about that. I mean, I, I do care a lot about that girl. I do miss her. I miss the conversations we had and things of that nature. But ultimately, that reduced the stress in my life. Uh, now, and, and because they made so many mistakes mentioning my work and things that only me and my friend would know. I'm not a violent person anymore. I don't, I don't hurt anybody. I'm just trying to get the hell out of this country and stay the hell out of this country once everything goes back to normal. I don't want anything to do with this country. I'm just trying to leave. <laughs> so my point is, all these people, and what's funny is he's still terrified of me. I can tell because he stutters sometimes when I get get him nervous. Uh, because he knows the level of violence that I was capable of. Not saying I'm not still capable of that same level of violence, but I'm not somebody that participates in violence anymore. That's not who I am anymore. I'm not that person anymore. And that's what's funny, is um, all this nonsense, the secret code of the narcissist hath been broken in. So many people think negatively about this employer, and, and you know who you are. So many people think negatively about you, former clients, former employees, etc. It doesn't matter. I, I, I do one review on each thing with my name, okay? Uh, every account that I have has my name on it. I don't hide like a little coward, okay? That's the one big difference between me and chief handler, your, your owner, who I know has the vanity license plate boss because they're that freaking crazy. So I know who you are now. What's really disturbing, I think, is the fact that these people do not care who they hurt uh, as collateral damage. Uh, for example, when they were uh, when they were basically trying to make me believe it was my friend from Argentina doing all this. What was so sad about that? And they knew they knew about her uh, her issues uh, because my friend knew about her issues. Okay. And uh, they didn't care. They didn't care who they hurt. They didn't care how that might have made her feel, what that may have done to her on a personal level. They don't care. All they wanted to do was get even with me. They don't care about bringing up my ex-girlfriend into the situation and about the things that happened with her. And they certainly don't care about 
po posting tidbits of my mental health record and things of that nature. Meanwhile, it's well known to me, my former supervisor, who this most definitely is at this point. I'm almost 100% positive of that. The, about the only thing she didn't do is say, this is who I am. But the fact that she threatened to use my mental health record against me when I worked for this organization. So, this video is going to be about the differences between police harassment and gang stalking. And I have a unique ability to uh, state this because I've been a victim of both. When I was homeless, I was the victim of police harassment pretty much on a regular basis. I'd say at least once a week I was getting uh, thrown on the ground, uh, roughed up, uh, accused of having drugs on me until they searched me and found I didn't have drugs, put in a holding cell for eight hours, uh, all sorts of stuff. Just, just not treated very nicely by the police. Uh, and that's police harassment. One of the instances was, um, uh, I think I've stated in past videos, uh, when it was way too cold out, I uh, would sign myself into a nut ward and one of the times the nut ward is in the hospital, which is in um, an, basically a black neighborhood. And when I walked out of the, out of the hospital, I was um, basically harassed by a Hispanic police officer who told me I was the wrong color to be in that neighborhood. And you know, this is just police harassment. This is what police do because they have uh, penis envy, <laughs> to quote Freud. But I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, what it is though is a lot of police, in my opinion, have um, what would be considered, a, psychologically speaking, an inferiority complex. And, uh, and they compensate for that with um, psychopathic tendencies and things of that nature. That's my opinion on most police. However, it's important to understand police harassment is not gang stalking. Gang stalking is uh, taken by, um, it's taken over by individuals that gang up on the person. Now I'm not saying that gang stalking cannot happen in police departments or that gang stalkers do not use the police to harass the person. But the gang stalking usually takes place, in my opinion, and, and, and in my instance, it's very obvious who was doing it, and it was former co-workers of mine. Um, with police harassment, how do the two intertwine? Well, a couple times I've gotten threats from alt-right lunatics about swatting me. Now, I'm not saying that these people were involved in the in the gang stalking that is taking place now uh or that it was gang stalking it was just alt-right morons being alt-right morons little kids that like to play video games and thinking that the police are an extension of their joystick um so what swatting is is when somebody calls the police on you and reports like a false hostage situation or something like that so the police show up and maybe kill you or something like that and that's that's a new thing but another thing is false reporting to the police actually my former employer are masters of that um they they false report a lot to the police about former employees and about clients and things like that they want to make look bad that's that's a common occurrence with that former employer something i was aware of before i even worked there uh and it was funny one of the people on my caseload made fun of me because he said you knew how screwed up this place was and you still agreed to work here and you know he's right he's right that's pretty screwed up and pretty stupid of me um what's interesting about gang stalking and i'm going to get into why you should never trust a flying monkey okay and a flying monkey or narcissistic agent or in this case it seems to be the narcissist himself that i'm arguing with in the comments section of my videos um I unfortunately thought it was the family of a young lady that my a young lady I was friends with from Argentina that decided to stop talking to me. Um, she probably decided to stop talking to me for any number of reasons, uh, most likely just because uh, she found someone else, or maybe she just didn't want to meet me. What happened is she decided to stop talking to me right before I was going to come down and uh, literally uh, days before I was gonna come down. 
And unfortunately, days after she stopped talking to me, that's when all the rigmarole happened with my ex-girlfriend, with the pulmonary embolism, with blah, 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 blah. And that was, uh, it was, it was a very stressful time in my life. But what I, what I found out with these gang stalkers, and that's when the gang stalking really started to elevate was um, after this started happening. And I think it's because my friend, who actually did help me get down to the city to see my ex-girlfriend on the night that she was uh, taken by helicopter to uh, the Better Hospital in Philadelphia where they could actually uh, you know, keep her alive. Um, essentially what happened was, uh, that's when this gang stalking really picked up. And they really started saying things that had to do with my personal everyday life. And then months afterwards, that's when I started being stalked in actual life by what I think are probably just people that rented cars that looked identical to make me think that it was, you know, federal agents or something like that. But I'm not stupid. I don't just assume ridiculous crap like a lot of people do. Um, and that's the thing is one of the goals of the gang stalkers is to make you think that they're omnipresent and that they know all when they really don't they have to rely on contacts to get the information whether that's from hacking your devices or whether that's just from in my situation what it seems to be just people feeding them information and from their spying on me either with private investigators or through the use of flying monkeys from work uh, basically uh, employees that basically have been encouraged to spy on me. Uh, that's a big possibility. Uh, you never know for sure, but why should you never believe the flying monkey? Well, with my, uh, my friend from Argentina, or ex-friend from Argentina, I should say, uh, she's not talking to me, probably due to my terrible behavior. Um, with, the, with that instance, what happened was, uh, essentially, my, uh, they wanted me to believe that it was her family that was concerned about her. But initially, initially, years back, they stated that they were my supervisor and that she was, then they told her to stay away from me because I'm, quote, a, uh, quote, racist psycho. And then took back the comment after I called them out when I said, really, you're my supervisor, which one? And I started naming names and then they deleted the comment and told me I was a loon. Uh, now that I have them cornered and I know who they are, I know basically everything about them, now they're trying to convince me, you don't know, same, same deal as it was when I, uh, when I singled them out and knew who they were, when they were trying to get at me with my friend. Uh, as soon as you realize who they are, they start trying to, it's called gaslighting, they start trying to make you second guess your own intuition by claiming that I don't know you, I don't even know who you are, I don't even live in the same state as you, you're crazy, blah, 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 blah. But what it is, it's after they drop truths that only you understand to make you think, well, it makes you second guess, well, they know this, how can they not know me? But are they telling me the truth now? Maybe I am crazy. It, it makes you uh, second guess yourself. And this is a, a well-rehearsed thing. It's not, you don't have to be very intelligent to do this. This is common everyday bullying, okay? This is not like anything complex, but it does have to do with people that know how to get a reaction out of people. And that's the whole thing is they're going for a full reaction. Now, what I thought was because of my friend feeding them information, no doubt, what I thought was that these people were family members, originally family members of my friend from Argentina that did not want me to go to Argentina. So they did everything they could to get me to attack her family, which I did do because I thought it was her family. I tried to be as cordial as possible for months and months and months, but I, there's only so much you can take being called a gringo and all this other crap before you start going back at them. Uh, now, the thing is, their goal was never to get me to stop going to Argentina. It never was. And I'm still going to Argentina. I just won't, I won't be seeing my friend, obviously. Um, but the thing is, their goal was not to get me to stop going to Argentina. They didn't care whether I went to Argentina or not. What they wanted to do was alienate me from this girl so that I didn't have 
a point of contact, a point of sanity in the world. So that what they do is they try to separate you from everything around you. And they probably would try this with my ex-girlfriend, except for the fact that they know my ex-girlfriend is unreachable. She's not going to deal with this crap. Okay, and I'm not even saying they even contacted my friend in Argentina that they may have and they may have lied to her about certain aspects of my life and things like that. But that's neither here nor there because that that chick is no longer in my life, uh, which actually is a de-stressing thing, uh, meaning unstressing. It, it takes stress out of my life in the sense that it was quite stressful trying to understand her and deal with her own peculiarities. Uh, due to certain um, developmental issues she had. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, this is the reality of gang stalking versus police harassment. Police harassment is just police harassing you. Okay, and I've, I've lived through that since I've been a teenager. And people might wonder, why did I get so worked up about that chick from Argentina uh, in the past? Uh, she ain't talking to me anyway, and I'm sure it probably wouldn't offend her, but I don't like talking about this because it's not really my place, but I'm going to do it anyway. She's not talking to me. She's not in my life. She's probably not going to see this video, but she has something that used to be called Asperger's and is now called Autism Spectrum Disorder. And uh, what's so messed up about this is these gang-stalking flying monkeys were pretending for months. Now, mind you, these people say the same exact things, regardless of whether they're pretending to be from Argentina, Australia, etc. Some of them even revive their accounts after I shut them up. They'll take their account down and put it back up with the same name. Uh, one of them is Charlie Marmite. But the thing is, it seems as though these people are either hired or paid to attack people over the internet, like uh, the Israeli Mossad has, the um, they basically do that. They have um, part of their army attacks people that are anti-Israeli, um, and that's just what their job is. But there are also probably gang stalkers for hire. I wouldn't doubt if people put ads in Craigslist. I haven't looked in Craigslist in like two decades, but I wouldn't doubt if that's even a, a probable thing. I mean, we know that protesters, jobs for protesters have been in Craigslist. Isn't this basically the same thing? But ultimately what I want to point out is these people knew full well this girl's limitations and her issues. So for literally about a year, they laid into me, pretending to be her parents, to get me to uh, lash out. And I did, I never essentially, it was like Satan with Job, where God takes away everything Job has and tries to get Job to renounce God. They tried very, very hard to get me to attack this girl. And eventually I did. Uh, not not in a nasty way because I'm not a complete prick and I do have some morality but it, it was to the point where I did say something and it was sad uh, because I should not have done that but the fact of the matter is for them to know that this girl had the limitations she had full well know it okay because my friend my so-called friend that I was talking to that was obviously feeding them information, also knew that this girl had autism. And when I explained on the phone, I almost got him to break the one time. I explained on the phone, I go, do you understand the differences between her limitations and my limitations? Because this is supposedly his speciality, is child developmental disorders, like Asperger's or autism spectrum disorder. And the thing is, unfortunately, I will never know what happened to this chick because she's not talking to me. I don't know if she's in a catatonic state from all the nonsense that was caused by these people, by pretending to be her parents and pretending to be her family and pretending to be her friends and pretending to be concerned citizens and pretending to be all this other nonsense. And, you know, and what's really sad is she did tell me flat out, she said, I don't know these people. And she asked them to stop. And I didn't believe her. I didn't believe that that was possible because it seems like what happened is that these people are so pervasive 
that they just swarm the internet looking for everything on their target. And they found out everything about her, and they knew that they could use her against me. But the one thing that they don't know, I don't think, she was done with me long before they started turning up the heat. Uh, and that's what's funny, is they probably think they got her to stop talking to me. No, they didn't. They probably got her from talking to me again, but initially she gave up on talking to me, and I don't know why. It might have been because she was tired of me saying I was coming down and stuff coming up in my life and me not showing up down there. It could be because she found somebody else. It could be because she... It could be because she didn't think I could understand, you know, the limitation, the limitations that she has. It could be any number of those things, um, and and things that aren't even mentioned, things I don't even, I couldn't possibly imagine. It could be anything. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it was not them that actually successfully got her to stop talking to me. It was her that stopped talking to me by her own choice, and that's what's funny. So they didn't succeed. Now they can accuse me of stalking her and all this other stuff. To this day, since she's told me to leave her alone, which was when she said, not, not as brash, she wasn't brash with me. She just basically said that we needed to stop talking permanently. She didn't give me a good reason why, and it, it was right before I was coming down, so it was very confusing to me. But that was before I started learning about autism and learning about her limitations and certain personality issues and things like that. So it's still, it, look, Eliana, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I am very sorry for how I treated you. But ultimately what people don't grasp, or what these people don't grasp, is they were not successful in getting her to stop talking to me. That was her choice. They didn't have a role in that. They can think they did, but they didn't. Okay, and if they did play a role in that, if they did take advantage of this girl's limitations because they're asses, then that just shows how horrible they are. But the one thing they did know, the whole time they were pushing this, trying to get me angry at her, knowing that I have anger problems, and knowing that she has Asperger's, or Autism Spectrum Disorder, knowing both situations, they poked and prodded and tried to get me to lash out at her for over a year until I did. And again, I controlled myself with her. Why? Because I actually do care about her and I respect her as an intellectual. Okay, that is the actual reason why. And then, uh, I mean, they do everything. One of my favorites was they were trying to accuse me of uh, pedophilia. But what was so bizarre is when I got them to admit that she was 24 years old, that didn't even stop them. <laughs> they just kept going. But the thing is, that's how pervasive they are. They try to find out everything they can on their target and everything they can on the targeted individual, other people that are being targeted. And uh, for all I know, uh, they've communicated with her family and lied about me. They communicated with her and lied about me. I doubt that. I don't think she'd play that game because initially, I mean, she did tell them to stop it. That is the truth. Um, and I, I had thought that it was maybe an ex-boyfriend of hers, maybe a parent of hers. They claimed to be her parents a couple times. And the thing is, uh, I got to thinking, as far as I know, her dad told me off a couple times, and he told me off in the Espanol. I don't think he, kn I think he know hablo the inglés, uh, at all. So, the more I think about it, the more I'm pretty sure that it was not her parents, uh, that and the fact that they said the same things. Sometimes they'd intersperse it with bad Spanish or broken Spanglish or broken English to try and convince me that it was uh, them, uh, that it was, you know, her family or her friends from Argentina, when it clearly wasn't. And then on top of that, what was funny is, uh, and uh, you know, and no, I'm not cutting you in. If I ever started a taco chain in South America called Senor Taco the Big Heads, which was one of the insults that I was called. I am not, I'm not cutting you in, no. No, no, Senor Taco the Big Heads is mine, man. Uh, but anyway, that's the crap. They keep trying to poke and prod and everything, and they use, they have no morality. They don't care if that girl got hurt by what they did. They don't care if she's in a catatonic state. They don't care if she may have lost her job because of that. 
I don't know anything about it. And that the thing is, it's because, like I said, when she said to leave her alone, basically, more or less, I did leave her alone. That's the truth. I didn't make up any goofy accounts to try and spy on her or anything like that. So I really have no clue what's going on in her life. I hope she's well. I'm not trying to talk to her because she clearly does not want to talk to me or she'd be talking to me. But the fact of the matter is, they were not the ones that were successful at having her not talk to me. Unfortunately, I was. <laughs> But that's the truth. These people have no morality, no sense of decency. They will use anything they can to harm their target their targeted individual. They will do anything they possibly can, even if it means destroying the life of an innocent person that they don't even know. And that's what infuriates me so badly, is knowing what this girl had going on with her, the neurological issues that she had, and then still pushing me, knowing full well my anger issues. Luckily, I was under enough control of myself not to lash out in a, a, a loony way. And also what kept me from doing that is I really do care about the girl. That's not a joke. That's a genuine thing. I do care about her whether I ever see her or not. Uh, but it's neither here nor there because she's not talking to me. But it does show that these people, I mean, I don't believe in good or evil. But if I was to believe in evil, this would be the closest thing to evil. These people are the kind of people that would, uh, you know, that could kill, that they could probably kill children and not think twice if it, if it gave them pleasure. It's not about coming out on top. What they're doing to me doesn't help them come out on top. It might help them come out on top emotionally because they have uh, very bad inferiority complexes, which they, they're compensating for by trying to tear me down. But it's not about winning because they're not winning anything by doing what they're doing. The only thing they're doing is trying to build themselves up at my expense, but it doesn't work now. Now that I know who they are, it's not going to work. But that does show, the, the situation that I just explained in this video, does show how immoral and without mercy these people are. The point is, is the gang stalkers take you off kilter. They take you off center. And then you lose yourself into a world of paranoia and bitterness. And I can't allow that to happen. It's funny too, because like the, uh, the so-called uh, uh, chief handler or whatever uh, said, quote, I could have bitches on my dick, okay? What he doesn't understand is a person does not try to uh, have a relationship with a um, with a math professor, an Argentine math professor, because he's into having bitches on his dick. Okay, I could achieve that. Yes, I could, but ultimately I'm a eugenist. And for those that don't know what a eugenist is, go to the website. I'll leave a link, eugenics.net. I promise you that, yes, I'm aware I, I could have bitches on my dick. But that's not what that was about. I had plans for that young lady. Big plans. Uh, and unfortunately, those plans will never see the light of day. But that's not the end of my plans. I still plan on moving to South America, where there are more like her. Okay? So that's the goal there. I have a, I still will not allow my plans to be destroyed because survival is the highest law. I have a philosophy. My philosophy has three points, survive, thrive, and procreate. The fourth one is repeat, survive, thrive, procreate, repeat. That's the philosophy of nature. That's the law of nature. Okay, that is true Darwinian philosophy. As much as that would make Nietzsche turn in his grave, that is the philosophy of nature. Okay, so the fact of the matter is, I allowed all this nonsense to take me off center, to take me away from my goals of juventology. Uh, juventology is that first law, survival. Survival is the first law. 
and that's the truth. So I started looking at myself and I started looking like hell, okay? I started looking pretty haggard over the years. Uh, between uh, the, the, the nonsense with, you know, all the nonsense with the people on social media and everything else, social media was a tool for me, a tool to spread the good news of juventology and transhumanism. And I allowed harassers, people that had nothing but ill will for me, to take me off of that path, that path of spreading the good news of transhumanism and juventology. Well, I'm back. And that's all I have to say. I know who these people are. I don't care who these people are. They won't get away with it anymore. They're certainly not going to get away with it after what they did to the young lady from Argentina. Because I am also very justice-minded. And I will do everything within the confines of the law to bring these people to justice. And that's all for this video, except for, remember this, do not allow the gang stalkers, the people that have nothing but ill will toward you and toward the world, that have no desire but to spread bitterness and hatred, do not allow them to take you off center. Stay in the, in the now. As uh, Aleister Crowley said, you know, Stay, live today. It's today. You live in the moment. So I want to be very clear. Stop trying to suck my former friend. She's not my friend anymore. But stop trying to suck my former friend from Argentina back into this. It's not going to work. You're not going to cause any cognitive dissonance with me. Okay? I know who you are. You know I know who you are. Cut it the hell out. Every time I corner you, every time I know who you are, you try and throw things into the mix and walk it back. The fact of the matter is with the girl from Argentina, she doesn't want anything to do with me. I recognize that. I did recognize that. Until you tried to make it appear as though friends and family members of hers were keeping her from speaking to me. And look, she's never speaking to me again. She's out of the equation. There's no repairing what I've done because of you, okay? The fact of the matter is, though, unlike you, I take full responsibility for my stupidity and my ignorance. I take full responsibility for the hurtful things I said to her. I take full responsibility for all of it, despite the fact that I was being misled by uh, people from my former employer. I know who you are, I know what you're doing, I might not know who every one of you are, but I do know who the main one is, okay? So keep that in mind, I know who you are, okay? What happened yesterday, I reported that, okay? So that's been reported, okay? The, 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 um, the vandalism of my property has been reported, okay? So what else, you know, keep suck, keep trying to suck this girl back in and you're going to get burnt. You're going to get burnt because she had nothing to do with this. And you're only, this is the thing, you think, you think you're stressing me out. You're not. You're getting me angry. Okay, you're getting me angry. You're not stressing me out. You know, and this is the thing, you kept turning up the heat. The more you found out, when I was in the cardiac unit of the hospital, you continued harassing me with information that you know undoubtedly got from my idiot friend that works uh, at the same place. And you kept turning up the heat. You thought it was real funny to put me under more stress. The fact that uh, my friend from Argentina quit talking to me, the fact that my ex-girlfriend had had to be had died and had to be resuscitated and I had to take care of her for six months and I went through all of my savings taking care of her, you had to try and turn up the heat because you thought it was real funny. But what you don't understand, what you don't understand is the only positive reviews for your company come from trolling accounts such as Ronaldo Mexico. Okay, so I'm on to it. I'm on to it. And the thing is with Ronaldo Mexico is Ronaldo Mexico 
uh, came back on me with the same nonsensical scripted language as the people that are harassing me on here. Okay, so I'm well aware of the trolling accounts, I'm well aware of the tactics, I'm well aware of the gaslighting, I'm well aware of the attempts to cause cognitive dissonance. You're not going to get away with it. Okay, and you're certainly not going to suck the girl from Argentina back into it. She chose not to speak to me, period. If she doesn't want to speak to me, I'm not going to be speaking to her. That's what it boils down to. I don't know why she stopped speaking to me. I don't care why she stopped speaking to me. The fact of the matter is, she is an innocent person with her own issues that you are well aware of by this point. And you're continuing to try and use me against her to hurt me. That was the whole purpose of that. And you know what? Ooh, it worked for a little bit. But you know what? It's not working now. But you have no remorse for the harm that you may have caused her by doing everything you could, torturing me for over a year and a half regarding her, trying to make it appear as though her family was, uh, was saying things about me, then trying to make it appear as though her herself was saying things about me. Well, you know what? It doesn't work anymore. Remember, I know who you are. There's nothing you can do to cause any cognitive dissonance here. I understand how it works. The more I reviewed your company on Facebook, the more you turned up the heat on here, okay? The more I made videos about your company, the more you turned up the heat, okay? This all started, what's funny is this all started with videos that weren't even about your company. They started with videos, if you remember that, back when you started harassing me and claiming you were a doctor of such and such, a neuropsychologist or some horse crap like that, back with Ice Queen, your worst nightmare, uh, that, which was the moniker you were using then. It all started with basic videos I made questioning the scientific reality and the medical reality of psychology. And you couldn't handle that. You were holding meetings about how to stop me from making videos about psychology and about how terrible psychology is and the basically the crimes against humanity committed in the name of mental health. I worked there. You're forgetting that. I know all about everything that goes on there. You're forgetting that. Senor Ronaldo Mexico, who positively reviewed your company, made the mistake of claiming to receive services from every branch, every every department there, okay? Why, why didn't that work? Oh, well, because he claimed to receive services from ID and MR, which means intellectual deficiency or mental retardation, okay? So I doubt he would lack, he, I doubt he would have the language skills to leave the like six paragraph long positive review he gave. Plus, if he was in community treatment team, remember, I worked there, community treatment team would bar him from receiving services from case management. And if you have an ICM case manager, you rarely, if ever, have an ACM case manager, and you certainly don't have a PATH case manager. So the thing is, I grasp how that place works. I know how you try to destroy clients. I know how you try to destroy employees. You will not suck that girl back into this situation. She is not a sacrificial animal. Despite her Incan heritage, she is not a sacrificial animal. She might be to you, she's not to me. So if you keep it up, you're not. You are not stressing me out. You are making me angry. And I am hyper-focused, okay? And you have to understand, I know where to go. And you know how I know you know I know where to go? It's because every time I go there, you get mad, okay? I know people on the inside. I'm not completely oblivious as to what's going on. You think I am, but I'm not. Keep it up. There's more former employees like me that are not very happy. Okay? And you're going to find out the hard way what's going on. That's, that's what the truth is. Keep it up. Keep trying to turn up the heat on me. This ain't stressing me out now. I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I'm on my way to South America to say bye to this place forever. But I will not stop. See, this is the thing. 
You had the choice. You could have just left me the hell alone. Let me live my life. Let me go to South America. Let me do what I wanted to do with my life. But you didn't. You had to keep trying to turn up the heat on me. Well, you know what? You did too much. And I caught you. And I am now, regardless of whether I moved to South America or not, I'm not letting this go. I will not stop until your company implodes. You harass people. You harass former co-workers of mine. You keep people from being able to quit. You you basically try to extort money out of people. You You're terrible, horrible, rotten people. And I know exactly who the main one is trying to pull this crap. You run the place like a mafia, or you run it like a Stalinist labor camp, and that's not appropriate behavior. You damage people's psyches, you damage people's physical health, you damage people, period. You are a public health nuisance. And I will not, one more time, I will not allow you to suck that girl back in. And I thought, you know, there's a lot of mistakes you made regarding that, and I caught you on all of them. I should have believed her, and that's the one reason I take full responsibility. When she told me she didn't know who you were, and she told you to stop, I should have believed her. She is a good-hearted person, and I should have never, never not believed her regarding you. You are scum. You are worse than scum. To do what you did to that girl, you are worse than scum, especially considering you don't know her. You don't, uh, you don't have to live with her. You don't know what she, what's going on in her life. I knew her, and that's the truth. And for you to do that, for you to work so hard to get me to lash out at her like I did months ago, it's very wrong. Now, I'm lucky. I'm lucky I had the sense not to go overboard, okay? Because I honestly thought that if she was upset with me, it had to do with her own issues. And it might have, but that's not my business. And as I said before, when you lied to me and tried to make me think bad things about her, and I blocked your one account, your Jimmy Chunga Jimmy account, I blocked you because, or no, it was Tig Manson. I, I lose track with how many of you there are. The reason I blocked that account is you were telling me things about her private life, and that's when I thought you were her family. The fact is, whatever she does is her business. I've never gone out with her. I never will go out with her. She is not in my life. I am not in her life. Leave her the hell out of it. Okay? The more you do things to suck her back into this, the more you are going to turn up my anger. And my anger, you don't want to see me angry. Okay? You don't want to see me angry. If you don't believe me, why don't you ask my friend who you get information from? And he can tell you. Okay? You don't have to worry. I'm operating within the confines of the law. But you will find out what happens. Your company will implode. It will implode. You will all be jobless and you will never be able to work in the field again like you've done to former employees. You've destroyed their careers. You've destroyed their lives. Well, it's about time somebody destroyed your lives, destroyed your careers. Okay? And I will operate completely within the confines of the law. You don't want me to report you to the county. Don't screw with me. So I want to point this out. After years of harassment, and knowing it was my former employer the whole time, uh, and then my former employer flat out giving it away by saying, of accusing me of making up multiple accounts, in order to review them on multiple platforms, which I do not do. I have uh, one, all my reviews are easily traced back to me because that's who I am. Unlike them, I don't hide behind the anonymity of the internet. Uh, why am I making this video? Well, to be quite honest, it's a bit of a joke. But the reason I'm making it is because they, by harassing me, knowingly, because they obviously spied on my friend from Argentina quite thoroughly and knew very well her limitations and the challenges that she had in life and sucked her into this bullshit. Okay? So you know what that does? That gets me a little bit angry. Okay? Which makes me want to say some things. 
and it's best put in another way. Now, I want to get, that's not the only reason why. I mean, my friend, in heavy quotations, my friend from this organization, my friend that got me the job at this organization, okay, now, what did he do? He gaslighted the hell out of me for years tried pretending like I didn't know what I was talking about, and the icing on the cake, which my ex-girlfriend luckily has witnessed two things, one was when a person that works for Pendel Mental Health was physically harassing me in person, she was a witness to that, and the other thing was when my friend, my friend, mind you, my friend, <laughs> tried to convince me that I allegedly tried to run over my former supervisor, which was complete bullshit, which for a number of reasons, number one, if I, if I attempted to run over my former supervisor, uh, I probably wouldn't have gotten unemployment or at least would have been challenged on unemployment and the police would have been called. The fact of the matter is, Unfortunately, I didn't call the police. One more time, I will explain this. I should have called the police on her, and I had to threaten to call the police on her about three or four times to get her to stop hitting my vehicle, because she's a lunatic. And now she's an associate executive director. I won't mention which one. I won't mention which one. Although her name does sound a little, you know, Hebraic. But... What I want to get out here, what I want to point out, this organization, Pendel Mental Health Center, likes to play this woke bullshit, okay? Well, if they're woke, they're going to get broke, okay? What do I mean by that? They're pretending to, they pretend to be all liberal and friend of all minorities and they love brown people and... Blah, 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 blah. Now, they love brown people. Okay, my friend from Argentina was a brown person. A brown person with limitations that they knew full well about by spying on her and finding out every goddamn thing they could about her and trying to make me believe that her and her family did not like me and wished me the worst. Okay, when in reality, she probably just wanted to be left alone, and I apologize to you, kiddo. I really do. I am sorry. I, I wasn't thinking clearly for obvious reasons from the constant harassment. She was a brown person. They didn't treat her very nicely, did they? But more importantly, more importantly, the executive staff of this organization is all white. All white. Karen Buer, Associate Executive Director, White. David Marsden, Associate Executive Director, White. Aaron McHugh, Associate Executive Director, White. Carrie Myers, Human Resources Director, White. Elodie Witkowski, Associate Executive Director White. Now, does that really reflect the diversity of the area in which we as a community live? No, it does not. That does not reflect the diversity of this area. Does it? No, it doesn't. It does not. Uh, I think that, you know, I think the facts are the facts. And frankly, if these people truly believe in the liberal horseshit that they're peddling, they should all step down. Every one of them should step down. There's never any repercussions. Okay, so why am I so pissed? Then up on after being fired, after being fired, before my firing was even finalized, I'm getting calls that day from my clients asking me why I quit, why I betrayed them, why I did this. Because my coworkers were telling my clients that I betrayed them and that I ditched them. Okay? Then for months, because my supervisor 
as an imbecile and lied and said that I tried to run her over, despite the fact once more, if I tried to run her over, the police would have been called and I would not have gotten unemployment. I would have at least been fought on unemployment and the police would have been called. Okay. So I'm getting calls from my coworkers congratulating me for allegedly attempting to run this kook over, which I never tried to do, but she lied about it. Again, I did not try to do it because the police weren't called and I got, I got my unemployment. I didn't get fought on unemployment, but everybody there likes to cook up little stories because of the office politics. So this is why I'm pissed off. But the ultimate thing that pissed me off was sucking my friend from Argentina into this bullshit. That's what pissed me off the most because whoever did that, and I know who it is, I know all three of them, okay? Whoever did that was very, very, very inconsiderate of that young lady's individual issues and her short and her own personal issues, her own personal mental health issues that they purposely used her against me because they knew I cared about her and they knew I was planning on going to Argentina to see her and they went out of their way to suck her into the situation. And that pisses me off. There were a number of times people would tell her to leave me alone because I'm a dangerous racist. Here's a news flash for you morons that don't understand this. She's a justicialist. You don't know what a justicialist is because you're not an Argentinian. You might know who Juan Domingo Perón was. Okay. My little, my little friend from Argentina is a Nazi sympathizer. Okay. So she was well aware of my views on race and everything else. But did you ever think my views on race might have matured at all? Ever think of that? Ever think I might be more concerned about, I don't know, efficiency and the way things work, especially how I was treated by the people that work at this bullshit organization? Ever think of that? Now, this young lady was sucked into this without any concern. And what really irks me is my one friend that worked there, his speciality is childhood developmental issues and intellectual developmental issues. And he knows goddamn well what's wrong with that girl. And he didn't even have to spy on me for that because he knows because I told him because I was trying to ask him for help on how to understand Asperger's syndrome. He knew goddamn well what was wrong with her and he knows goddamn well who's screwing with me and how they're doing it and why they're doing it. And he just gaslighted the hell out of me for years. Now, a friend of mine, now this is the thing that you don't understand. As far as people that used to work there that are pissed off, we are legion. There's not just one. It's not just me. It's not just another person. We are legion. There is a multitude of us. The problem is you can't keep getting rid of people on bad terms and expect nothing to happen. The problem that the, the only problem that was in the past is there was no unifying force. I aim to be that unifying force. I aim to be the tip of the spear that brings down Pendel Mental Health Center completely legally. That is my goal. Okay. And you will hear from me either, either I, until I go to Argentina or until Pendel Mental Health is shown to be the corrupt shithole that it is. And being that Argentina doesn't seem to be opening up anytime soon due to the COVID-19 crisis, you will be hearing from me for a long, long while. My point is, the bullshit from this organization, the lies, the half-truths, the untruths, the defamation of people's characters, it will come to an end. Now, the county does turn a blind eye. Like my friend, one of my friends that used to work here, 
and uh, had issues at this place due to sexual harassment. She was sexually harassed by her co-workers. Names won't be named, but I'm sure anybody watching this video can use their imagination because, you know, there's only a few people there that are rampant sexual abusers of their fellow co-workers and clients. Uh, so she left and she was worried because she goes, they try to make us look like crackpots. Well, the problem is, we are legion. <laughs> you can't make everybody look crazy. That's the problem. There are a gr There is a great multitude. More than any one person is aware of, because as I said, I aim to be that unifying factor. I aim to be the tip of the spear. So I am in communication with the other people that are not even in communication with one another. But this place is the most corrupt shithole in the area. And it will, will be brought to the light of day. And that's a promise. As I said, you'll hear about me. You'll hear from me completely legally. I'm not doing anything illegal or anything wrong or anything violent. I am not a violent person. I don't plan on being violent. I've, I'm not a violent person. I did not try to run anybody over despite what's claimed. I did not try to harm anybody physically. That's not my nature anymore. That's not who I am anymore. But you will hear from me until I go to Argentina. And thanks to the COVID-19 crisis, it does not look like I'm going to Argentina for a very, very long time. And that's all for this video. Check the description. Check the uh, credentials of the CEO of Pendel Mental Health that's less than the students that go there to finish their internships. So I wanted to discuss some new insights I have into my unique situation with gang stalking. Now what's funny is the gang stalker the Prime One who calls himself Chief Handler or herself Chief Handler. I'm dead serious, I know who this person is. Now what's funny is, about a week ago, uh, somebody commented on one of their comments and stated that Chief Handler is the name of a group account used by gang stalkers. Uh, I like to use the term organized harassment because that's more so what it is, and I think it sounds less crazy, uh, because gang stalking has been made look insane, but it's really not, as you'll see, because there's a lot of news stories where people have been gang stalked. Uh, now, this person, this chief handler, uh, stated to me, Google my name, Google my name, and you'll see, I harass all you people. Uh, all you morons, yeah, I harass all of you. Now the thing is, because I've blocked this idiot because he harassed subscribers of mine, you don't harass my subscribers. Don't think about it, okay? Don't. And that's exactly what Ice Queen Your Worst Nightmare did years ago. She harassed my friend from Argentina, went on her channel and started harassing her, okay? Now, the thing is, um, these people, the reason I know it's my former employer is because they release information. It's not just chief handler. I've gone through Tig Manson, who was one of the first ones after Ice Queen, Your Worst Nightmare. Tig Manson was the moniker used by the one that wanted to tell my little friend from Argentina that I'm a dangerous racist. And that's part of the thing is what you'll find out as you learn about gang stalking, they'll throw out that you're a, a racist, a pedophile, a criminal, all these things to try and discredit you. It's, it's essentially character assassination. But also, as this person is now trying to make it appear as though this is a delusion. Well, I have evidence, uh, physical evidence, of, well, eyewitness evidence, I should say, of being harassed by people that worked for my former employer. I also know that the harassment on social media, especially on YouTube, coincides directly with my amount of whistleblowing on my former employer. 
when I was on Facebook, the more I blew the whistle, the more they'd turn up the heat on social media. Okay, especially on, uh, I just had hot cocoa, damn, got it all over my face. But the more they'd turn up the heat on YouTube, the more they'd attack me and try and suck my friend from Argentina in. I also know that there was a person that went by the name of Ronaldo Mexico that was one of the uh, one of the fake people that would give positive reviews to my former employer. And I also found out that there is a woman who's a supports coordinator uh, for Pendel Mental Health with the last name Ronaldo. And the career of a supports coordinator explains why there's so much pro-retard and pro-autism crap on her profile on Facebook. Uh, and that person attacked me personally because I pointed out that they gave a positive review to Pendel Mental Health. And I go, well, who do you know that's a member of the executive staff there? Because I know damn well you did not have a positive experience there. Because nobody does, as you can tell by their Google reviews, or their Facebook reviews, or their Yelp reviews, <laughs> or any reviews of this place. You can tell, unless it comes from an employee, or somebody that's related to an employee, they do not get a positive review. So, my view on gang stalking, I do think that some of it is just, you know, trolling. Everyday trolling and people harassing people. Uh, however, when it coincides with real life harassment, like when I was being, uh, people were keeping tabs on me very obviously, and that's the thing that you have to take note of. I went to school for criminal justice. I've studied private investigation, things like that. When you're investigating somebody, you're very careful not to be seen. When you're following somebody, you're very careful not to be seen. With these people, they want to be seen. They want you to see them taking pictures of you. They want you to see them writing things down. Because the fact of the matter is, who the hell literally takes a pen and paper and writes anything down? Who literally takes a camera anymore and takes pictures of somebody? with a super high focus lens, okay? That's not really gonna be happening unless the person wants to be seen. They're gonna use a cell phone, they're gonna be nonchalant, they're gonna be careful not to be seen. And the fact that that coincided with harassment by a, a former coworker of mine from this organization, and that this former coworker of mine seems to pop up in places that I'm at, more than about five times, which has been witnessed by my ex-girlfriend. So you're talking about maybe nine or ten times this person conveniently pops up at places where I'm at. One time tried to physically intimidate me by encroaching on my personal space in a food bank of all places. Okay, so the fact of the man, that was witnessed by my ex-girlfriend. So that's, that's really happening. Then you have the phone conversations with, with former co-workers of mine from that place gaslighting me that my ex-girlfriend was a witness to. So when you tie it all together, it does seem to be organized harassment. The fact that they had no problem trying to mislead me into thinking that they were a number of Argentinians from Argentina. They were personal friends of my little friend from Argentina and they did not want her around me because I was a dangerous racist, okay? The fact that they went out of their way to do that, but yet, but yet, they refuse to accept any connection to my former employer and want to mislead me as much as they can and throw me off the trail of the one group of people I have evidence from. The accusations made, they knew specific names of people I know in my life, not Chief Handler, but Chief Handler is just a fake name on an account. Now what's funny is this moron pretends to have been a helicopter gunner, okay? Now what's funny is, what a cowardly bitch if that was his job in the military. Now what's funny is they expect you to be afraid of him. I'm not afraid of no veteran. My training in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I know this because I've worked with many veterans. I've taken martial arts with many veterans. Many veterans came to the karate school I went to because the martial arts that they learned in the army was shit compared to the shit we teach.
okay? And why is that? Because you get one or two classes, even the Marine Corps, you get one or two classes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, that's it. Where I went, I was trained for what? 20 years in hand-to-hand -hand combat? I was trained how to kill people for 20 years? You think I'm afraid of some little bitch that murdered babies in Afghanistan? That's his claim to fame? Oh, I'm a helicopter gunner. I gunned down his innocent people because they were enemies of the Israeli state. Okay, so he's an ally of the people that attacked the USS Liberty, spied on the United States, and killed US civilians during the Levant Affair. He's an anti-American scumbag, which is why I have no sympathy. This is what cracks me up, all these veterans. Feel bad for me, I'm a veteran. Screw you. I don't give a damn. If you weren't a veteran, of the Revolutionary War, I don't give a damn who you were. Because every single frickin' war besides the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812 has been a war against my people, white Americans. If you're a veteran, you're an anti-American piece of trash. If you don't recognize that and people go, well, you support Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard recognizes the wrongness of what our military does around the world and domestically. That's what Tulsi Gabbard recognizes. Chief Handler is a, a group of scumbags that I'm assuming are paid character assassins. What do I mean by that? What's a paid assassin? If somebody has access to my apartment like these people do, they could put me out. They could blow my brains out. Okay, you know what I'm saying? They obviously have access to my apartment because they've had access to my apartment. One of the craziest things was I had bought a number of gifts before I was headed to go down to Argentina, uh, before my ex-girlfriend had the pulmonary embolism. It's really wacky. Like my friend from Argentina decided to stop talking to me permanently for undisclosed reasons. I still don't know why. I think, I think that her autism kicked in and she didn't want to see me. She had to, I think she came to terms with the fact that if I go down there, she actually has to see me in person, and I don't think she could handle that. But I had bought a number of gifts for her. Amongst these gifts were two books on, one was a book on Jesuit soup making, and a book on Jesuit bread making, about how they eat in the monasteries, because she's very Catholic and, you know, all that nonsense. So I got a book on Jesuit soup making and Jesuit bread making, and I got a book on Aesop's fables, and I got a makeup bag, because Chicky Poo down in Argentina is very into makeup, okay? So I got a makeup bag for her that was nice and stocked, full of various makeups for her, as she would put to play makeup, because, and I didn't put that together. So that's missing from, for over a year now, that's missing. So what it is, and everything's together, so I know where everything is, that's gone, okay? So that just shows they have access to my apartment, they have access to my things, they have access to me. But you notice they don't confront me, why? Because they don't want to get knocked on their ass. That's the whole thing. The point of the matter is, they want to pretend to be combat veterans and ninjas and all this other crap. Why don't they confront me? Why don't they confront me face to face? Because they're bitches. Because they're bitches. Even the punk ass bitch from my former employer that confronted me and tried to intimidate me by encroaching on my personal space did so from behind. Because he knows that I can't physically do anything about it in a public setting. Do that in my apartment and different things will happen. You put me in a self-defense situation and you will find out that you have made a very, very, very big mistake. So keep up the crap, okay? I got witnesses, I got evidence, I've invested in a security system. Keep up the crap and you'll see what happens. Put me in a self-defense situation, put me in a, a justifiable self-defense situation and you'll find out real quick the mistake you made. Uh, what you got is you got people that are reactive. An artificial intelligence is not going to be reactive. They're not going to react to the things you're saying. 
I've gotten these things, these people to freak the hell out when I was arguing about my friend from Argentina. I've gotten them to have outright temper tantrums, okay? Frantic temper tantrums, which made me think that it actually was people that, like maybe a student of my friend that was obsessed with her, or a classmate of my friend that was obsessed with her, or something like that, or an ex-boyfriend, or a family member, because that would make sense, people getting frantically angry. Um, and what it was is they were actually getting frantically angry that I won't give up. Now, I have given up on my friend, but that's because I think that she wants me to give up. That's her choice. Unfortunately, she couldn't tell me that. So, but that's a completely different story. But they could not get me to give up on her. They could not get me to do the old, um, oh, what is it, Job where Job renounces God. They couldn't get me to go, oh, does it make, does it make you, uh, ha does it make you happy to smile on the deeds of the wicked while you punish me or whatever the hell Job said. They could not get me to do that to her. Although they did, but I immediately apologized. Um, and that's the thing. They could not get that from me. They could not get me they couldn't push me that far, because I'm not that stupid. The things that were happening did not mesh with my friend's personality. My friend would never, now she might have been uh, fed up with me, or couldn't see me, or something, but she would never, never have people pull this crap on me. It just, it's not in her personality to do that. And that's what they got mad, is they could not get me to think it was her, okay? Then after they got me to give up on her, it got me to think a lot more clearly about how the stuff related to my employer and to my whistleblowing and things of that nature and how they, it would always gear up and I'd get attacked from all sides whenever I would attack my employer. And what I mean by attack is I would tell the truth about the unsafe work environment, the way employees were treated, the way, uh, the way clients were treated, the way uh, employees would talk about clients behind their back, the derogatory things that the place would say about people that came there, the falsification of paperwork, the falsification of insurance claims, and things of that nature. Okay, the more I talked about that on Facebook, the more it would gear up on here. Attack, 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 attack. Now, when they got me to give up on my friend from Argentina, they could no longer use her against me. They couldn't get me to think anything with her family or anything like that because it no longer made any sense. It, and then when they started saying, like, my favorite was when they claimed that I made up all these fake accounts because that's what they do. You have to understand they're transposing. This is not artificial intelligence doing this. They would transpose their, their misdoings onto me. You make up a whole bunch of accounts to give fake reviews is what they would say. Because they're making up fake accounts to attack me on social media. Honestly, I'm going to get into uh, why I started making these videos. And the, the reason why is uh, quite simple. It was that it finally came, I, I came to the conclusion that the online harassment uh, was basically, especially the online harassment, let's, let's take the other stuff out of the equation, the, the gang stalking stuff out of the equation. The online harassment completely centered around my former employer. Uh, when I would uh, post uh, comments on Facebook or share their Facebook posts showing how ridiculous they were and uh, pointing out things about their 990 and things like that, they would ramp up the stress. They were trying to stress me out by continually harassing me on YouTube. And at one time, it was very perplexing because they, they seemed to have firsthand knowledge 
of my friend from Argentina. They seem to have firsthand knowledge of uh, details in her life and things like that, but they didn't really. Um, apparently, they just they must have gotten. She ha- she has a multitude of different profiles and profiles all over the internet uh, from her modeling and from many things that she did. I mean, she's um, she's not hard to find on the internet. And uh, I suppose they really just dug into every every nook and cranny of her life to find out everything they could about her because they didn't just know things about her; they knew things about me that would have been impossible to know for anyone that wasn't my former employer, which involved key details from my mental health record. Uh, key details about people that I worked with and their from their personnel files, uh, and and just interesting little tidbits that there's no way somebody from Argentina could possibly know. In fact, you wouldn't even be able to hack the computer system of my former employer to find this stuff because it's not on the computer; it's in dead files because I haven't gone there in so long for treatment. Uh, so the and it, and this is the file uh, that my former uh, supervisor had held up and basically told me flat out she would use to destroy my life if I turned on the company. Okay. Then what I noticed is when I quit, uh, when when uh, I quit Eliana, I quit. I figured you know if she wanted to be talking to me, the girl would be talking to me. It's that simple. Once I quit talking about Eliana, and just didn't give a damn anymore about Eliana, because Eliana clearly is not interested in me,、uh, the conversation from the same people stopped being. We're pretending to be Argentinians. We're going to lambast you entirely based on your mental health record, your history of hospitalizations that we have in our file. And we're going to continually to continue to attack you, 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 and that's what happened. It had nothing to do with Eliana anymore. Now it was just straight up personal attacks. Whereas, and it was funny because before, when when it was about Eliana, they were attempting to make it sound as though they were Argentinian, like they were pretending not to know English, which isn't very hard because they're they're very poor with their English anyway. Uh, they're not very bright people, and that's what. Like, what's funny is I should have been able to put this together, but I couldn't because my mind was so focused on Eliana. Okay, that's what that boiled down to. There is, I was so focused on Eliana and Eliana not talking to me, and how could she not talk to me, and blah 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 blah, and I was thinking emotionally and this sort of thing. When that was taken out of the equation, it was very easy for me to see. Wait a second! Every time I say something on Facebook about this organization, this organization, or not this organization, but the harassment online dials up and dials up and dials up and dials up. Feliz cumpleaños, mi amiga. Look, if I were down there, maybe I get you a piñata, maybe I not get you a piñata, maybe I take you out for tapas, maybe I not take you out for tapas. Maybe it's a big deal. Maybe it's no big deal. Maybe your culture is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> so that's enough of my comedy.、Uh, frankly, I don't know where you stand. Frankly, I know I said I wouldn't make any more videos about you,、uh, but honestly, I figured why not?、Um, I know that you had recently had a birthday.、Uh, I don't know why you quit talking to me, and frankly, I don't care. I know at this point, after I've made such a monstrous ass out of myself, and、uh, perhaps a、uh, you know, perhaps a llama as well. Perhaps I made a llama out of myself as well. Llamas are much more、uh, adorable than an ass, you know. But my point is, is uh, clearly, um, I, the only thing I do know is that you don't wish to speak to me. Otherwise, you would. I don't know where we stand exactly, and I never will. But I do know that you have recently had a birthday. I wish you the best. I don't know what. Obviously, I don't know what's going on with you down there,、um, and obviously with this nonsense going on in the world, I can't mention it, or I'll get my video taken down and get a strike against me again. 
I don't know when I'll be down, nah, but I wasn't coming down to see you anymore anyway, because obviously if you're not talking to me, I don't wish to make you feel uncomfortable. It's just I have a ticket that I can't use, uh, and it's either use the ticket or lose the money. And at this point, I, uh, I have a feeling that I'm going to lose the money, but hey, all things are the way they are, you know? Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I, I did always care about you. I've never, look, people, people used the situation to take advantage of me and get me quite angry, and I'm very apologetic of how I acted, and uh, being that you weren't talking to me prior to me acting like a complete ass, I don't expect you to talk to me now that I'm saying this. I just want you to know I care a great deal about you. I always did, and that was the, the original reason I was coming down. Originally, it had nothing to do with anything, uh, you, well, you know, originally it was just because you were my friend and I wanted to see you and then other stuff happened and I made stupid mistakes and quite frankly, uh, yeah, I'm a complete idiot when it comes to you. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I hope you get all the dose leche you can eat. All of the, uh, what's that, was that, three milks crap, uh, what do they call that, uh, I think, uh, what is that, um, tres leches, there you go, get some of that tres leches, and I know you would love the cacao, other than that, I, I don't know, anyway, happy birthday, or feliz cumpleaños, uh, that's about it, just know that I do care about you. I only made this video to wish you a happy birthday, and I know that at least in the past you liked my humor regarding Hispanic culture. Don't know if you still do, but I think that was golden humor, okay? But, you know, whatever. That's all for now. Taco, taco.